recommend you check those out on our uh, on our YouTube channel, and I'll provide a link for those a little bit later on um, after we go through uh, most of the live demo here. All right, so for most of you, this may be your uh, you know first uh, look into Headshot if you're considering uh, purchasing the plugin or something like that. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, get started by uh, sharing my screen first, and we'll go from there. I'm going to just uh, throw in some uh, stuff here. Okay, so just to go through the uh, the basics of the webinar, the Zoom webinar panel, uh, we are going to do a Q&A section at the very end of this webinar, the last uh, 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes it extends a little bit longer than that. So if you have any questions related to uh, um, Headshot or any other uh, Reillusion products, feel free to put those into the Q&A section um, and we'll get to those in the last uh, section of the webinar. Try and keep it focused on, on the products at hand. If not, that's fine too. You can always contact me later. But um, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, we're also gonna be sending out a survey. So if you guys filled that survey, we always appreciate your feedback. Um, any comments, questions, suggestions you have for future webinars, um, please feel free to put your feedback into that form and uh, we will read that and take note and also provide you with a 10% discount from the content store. So we'll provide you like a voucher code um, for a 10% discount on the content store if you give us your feedback. So it's a nice little trade there. And uh, yeah, like we are recording this webinar as well as we move along here. We're also broadcasting it live on YouTube. Be aware that if you are uh, on YouTube, you won't be able to, we won't be answering questions from the YouTube live chat. We're only answering questions from the Zoom webinar panel uh, Q&A section there, okay? Um, I will also possibly be putting links into the chat window, um, but that's all I'm gonna be using the chat window for. All right, so just keep that in mind. I think that's about enough of an introduction here. Um, again, welcome everyone, wherever you are in the world. Um, hopefully you're having a good Monday or Tuesday, wherever you are. Um, so what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna just uh, go through kind of the, the basic stuff of, of, uh, of Headshot. I'm gonna give you a brief introduction. I'm gonna go through three basic uh, scenarios throughout this webinar. And if you have any more detailed questions and stuff like that, I'll be ha happy to answer any questions you have. And I'll also be able to uh, send you out, uh, you know, Thanks for those tutorials that we've uh, done over the last few weeks here. Okay, so yeah, let's get started right off the bat here. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about the difference here between auto and pro mode. So um, if you're not familiar with it yet, Headshot, of course, is a plugin for iClone or for, for Character Creator 3 rather, that allows you to uh, generate a head using artificial intelligence from an image. And we get some really accurate, really good results uh, from, from using this. We've been working on it for a long time and uh, finally just recently launched it. So hopefully, uh, you know, some of you icon users out there, character creator users are already uh, taking care of that, are already uh, utilizing it in your... ...projects rather. If you wanna, you can probably just find it in a really quickly. And uh, there you go. So I'll put this link into the description for you guys, or into the, uh, sorry, the <laughs> chat window. So you're so used to saying that with tutorials. Um, all right, I'm, I'm not gonna you know, go into too much detail on the web page because you can browse the web page on your own time. Um, just a brief introduction of, of some of the stuff. Uh, I think I've kind of already covered most of it. There's pro mode, uh, shape control. We'll get to all this stuff as we move along through the webinar, but I just wanted to put this uh, link into the chat window for you. If you want, you can check it out on your own time. Okay, so we are gonna be doing two uh, scenarios using auto mode and one scenario using pro mode. Now, uh, so we're gonna switch over to auto mode first here. Uh, again, if you uh, can't find headshot, it should be in your toolbar, uh, this little item here, headshot, or you can go to plugins and you should find headshot there. You can select whether to put it on the toolbar or not, okay? Uh, that's really all there is to it. Now, the, the first mode we're gonna talk about is auto mode, um, like I've mentioned in tutorials. This mode is useful, very useful for um, you know background characters in your video game or your or film project or whatever uh, that don't really need super high resolution. Like you're not going to be doing close up camera looks at them. Um, they're very good for like mid to long distance range um, characters on your screen, and you can uh, save a lot of resources by uh, you know just using auto mode and, and uh, reducing the poly count. And we'll talk about all that stuff later. But the main features, of course, are here on the top section: uh, 1K texture. So not very high texture, naturally. Uh, the, they create a 3D hair, which is a really big advantage in some cases. Um, it's fully automatic and intelligent texture blend. So it'll just uh, basically 
blend the textures together. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. Okay, so let's load in our first image first. So um, actually before that, let's go to photo preparation because we need to know the basics. of um, the ideal type of photo on the bottom left here below the uh, image, uh, this little gray shadow silhouette, whatever it is there. Okay, so that'll take you to this page, the headshot uh, help. Um, now, photo for auto mode, okay. Um, just, we'll go through this super quickly because you can read this on your own time again. Um, you wanna make sure that you have the correct image format. Um, the lighting needs to be evenly distributed on the face. I'm just gonna go down to the images so you can see here and I'll just use my voice to describe. So the lighting is very important. We don't want to have like shadows on one side of the face and no shadows on the other side, because when it generates your, your 3D uh, head, it's going to look a little bit um, mis like miscolored. So the left, you know, one side is gonna be darker than the other, just like the image, okay? And that's something that you don't want if you want accurate lighting results in your project, okay? So make sure you have even lighting like on the uh, left image right here, very important. Um, also very important is you want to have make sure that your expression is neutral, just like a passport photo, you know, or a driver's license photo. They say you can't smile, don't show your teeth or anything like that. Basically, that's the kind of image that you want. You just want those boring old, uh, evenly lit um, passport photo type images. You can see this guy with a very stoic, neutral expression. This is exactly what you want. Um, you don't want your lips to be curling up or frowning or anything like that. It's a very neutral expression. Um, it goes without saying here that face angle, ideally you want to have a front facing face angle here, like uh, this Captain America looking dude here, uh, looks like Chris Evans uh, facing forward. Um, you don't want to be facing sideways like this. Now for auto mode, um, generally it doesn't really matter if you have like a fringe of hair over top of your eyebrows or something like that, or for your forehead, because auto mode is going to generate an automatic hair, okay? Um, so we'll talk about this uh, right away here. In pro mode, um, the only real difference there is, um, you know, lighting's the same, obviously. You want the even lighting, you want the neutral expression, you want the front facing face angle, okay? Um, covering issues, uh, you don't want any sort of fingers or objects including the face um, for either uh, mode, okay? Um, now, if you're using pro mode and you have like a fringe of hair covering the forehead, uh, that generally would require uh, photo editing, um, using a photo editing tool. You can do it pre-generation uh, pre or post-generation of your head. And I'll talk about both modes uh, as we move along here. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. Um, again, you can check this out on your own time. I don't want to go too much into it. I kind of want to run into the live demo uh, right away here. Okay, so let's go ahead and load in our first image. Now, there's a couple of cool ways you can load in your image. You can double click on the uh, this uh, silhouette right here, like I mentioned. You can go down here to load image. You can click and drag in from Explorer like this. Uh, whoops, that's a different folder I have open there. You can click and drag in from Explorer. And you can also control uh, copy and control paste. If you're, if for example, I'm editing the head in Photoshop, I can just control copy the entire thing and I can control paste it um, right into this uh, little silhouette uh, section here. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and load in our first image. Again, we can just go ahead and load it. I'm going to find this image under production resources. I have a whole bunch of face images and this female face is the first one we're gonna load up. Okay, now uh, when I load her up, uh, make sure to pay attention. The first thing is, like I mentioned, there's a fringe of hair covering her forehead. This isn't a big problem because this is auto-generated. It's gonna generate an automatic hair. So uh, for body type, we currently have the female body type already, uh, the default female body type. So we don't need to change this. We can just select current. And for skin type, um, generally for skin type, I would I would recommend choosing something like clean soft um, for, for this uh, because it's a female character. And uh, yeah, you don't want to have, you don't want her to have a beard or a scalp or anything like that. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and generate this. Now, a couple of things to, uh, to mention here. Uh, about auto mode, I'm actually going to load in the uh, icon as well. This this will take about uh, a minute to generate the head. It's analyzing the facial image, and it seems like we already have some uh, some chat going on here as well. Okay, 
Um, yeah, so it'll take a, like maybe less than a minute just to generate an image here, uh, to, rather to generate the uh, the mesh and uh, the face. And what we're going to do next is I'm going to show you a couple of quick things how to adjust the eye color, how to quickly load up the the hair, um, the automatically generated hair in uh, from Headshot, and I, I customize the opacity of that. Uh, just a very quick adjustment. We'll talk about one of the most common problems that we've had previously to this is we've had um, problems with the eyelids. So, uh, in you know, if, if you're if you're a user of Crazy Talk Eight or you know Cartoon Animator and you've generated morph-based faces before, you'll have that kind of problem. And then finally, we'll get to a really quick uh, face animation as well. Okay, now uh, so I just generated our head. A really quick hotkey for you guys to uh, zoom in on the face is the J hotkey. Okay, I use this all the time when I'm using headshot. So wherever you are, if you're like down here somewhere or like way off in the distance, you can just press J. The J hotkey will focus on your character's face. Okay, so we have a fairly you know decent looking face here. The hair color may be a bit off, but we can always adjust that as well. Um, we can also adjust the hair opacity. So if we select the hair, uh, we, we go to our scene manager here, you can see the hair is called haircut. And you can make this invisible or visible, uh, what have you. Uh, you can go over here to your materials and you can adjust the diffuse color as well. So if I have diffuse selected here, um, you know what, what you can do is you can uh, just adjust the various uh, um, elements of diffuse. Now, it's just using the traditional shader mode. Okay, again, these characters are not meant to be used for close-ups. Um, they're meant to be used maybe at a distance like this. So what we can do is we can load in the uh, diffuse map here uh, into Photoshop. And to do that, we'll just go ahead and launch it, launch it. And we can just you know easily uh, add streaks into that hair or, or customize it, brighten it, uh, what have you. Um, but uh, actually the better way to do that, we'll close down the diffuse here. Um, just an easier way to do that. Again, you can do that using Photoshop, but I'm gonna show you a different easier way just to select the diffuse map here and go down here to adjust color. Okay, and if we wanna adjust the color, we can just make it a bit brighter, okay, just like this. And that maybe more closely matches our uh, character's uh, natural hair color there. Again, this isn't gonna be the most accurate representation, but you can increase the contrast as well to get it um, you know, to something a little bit closer to the original. I think that uh, higher contrast will be required in this case. And that looks a little bit more, uh, like what we're looking for, maybe increase the saturation slightly. Okay, again, my eyes aren't the best in terms of uh, <laughs> the actual colors, but you can adjust the hue and everything like that too. Maybe this uh, is a bit easier. Okay, we're gonna stick with that, that hair color. Now, uh, one thing to pay attention to is on the back here, you can see that um, it's not really the best results. Um, if you get, this is automatically generated. If you get a result like this and you want to adjust it, all you need to do is load the opacity map into Photoshop, okay? So click on the opacity channel right here and then just launch it into Photoshop. And uh, let's do something quick here. So um, what I can do is maybe just use the, our uh, polygon lasso tool and I'll just do something like this, like a really messy kind of um, hair pattern here. We're just gonna select all this stuff here, all this part of the hair and then go across here and do, 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 do. Again, ideally you'd want to spend a bit more time on this, more details, but uh, I'm not going for the uh, ideal results here or the longest, modes, most detailed results here. Um, so we're just gonna select all this and just go ahead and delete that, press delete and uh, control D to deselect. Now from here, all you need to do is go up to file and save, okay? Um, it'll automatically update your hair in uh, or in character creator. You can see right there. All right, so we've just kind of taken that hair off the shoulders, and it just looks, you know, decent. Again, for an auto character, auto generated character, generally this is the distance that you're going to have that character look at, looked at from. Okay, so you're not generally you won't be closer than this. Uh, we call this like a mid shot because you can basically see, you know, the section of the character, and that's about it. Um, that's how I remember it anyways. And uh, any closer than this, you'd probably want to use a uh, pro uh, generated image, okay? So anywhere from this distance, so like this distance here, um, that's what we uh, ideally want to have. All right, so let's go ahead and just throw like a quick uh, piece of clothing on her. 
Um, actually, actually, we need to adjust the eyes first. So again, the J hotkey. And let's go down here to texture adjustment. So really easy, really simple, straightforward. Um, our headshot character's eyes are uh, kind of a light gray, whereas it generated a brown eye. So all you need to do to fix that is just click on the gray eye color, and that will adjust the character's eyes to the gray color, just like that, okay? Um, it will be noticeable from a long distance, even like this as well. So it's important to at least have the, at the, at the very least have the correct eye color. Um, another very simple, uh, easy fix is if we go to our attributes tab up here and uh, we have our character selected, not our hair, we can uh, click on this to open or close our eyes. So this is the eyelid issue I was talking about earlier. So what um, it'll do automatically is essentially take the image and just kind of stretch the eyelashes over the eyelids when they're closed, which obviously looks a little bit strange and we'd, we'd rather try to avoid that. Um, the easiest and quickest way to, uh, to adjust that is to go down here under skin settings and go to eyelid mask. We'll talk about masking a little bit later on, um, but go to eyelid mask and choose something like a maximum upper eyelid. Okay, we'll just focus on the upper eyelid for this uh, um, situation here. Now what the maximum upper eyelid is going to do is that's going to mask out the upper part of the eyelid. And what that means is it's not going to use the image uh, it's not going to use this image to generate the upper eyelid. It's going to use kind of a intelligent uh, combination of the surrounding skin to do so. Okay. And once you're finished with that, once you selected what you want, just go ahead and select update skin texture. Uh, you can also choose to auto update if you want, but I prefer just to do things all at once and just kind of uh, um, update skin texture all at the same time. Okay. So that fixed our eyelid issue. So whenever your character has, has eyes closed from this distance, it won't look like really weird. It'll still look quite nice, okay? okay? So again, from this distance, it doesn't look that bad. And this is what you're gonna use automatically generated characters for uh, mainly in, in the first place. Okay, so let's just throw some really quick, uh, some clothes on here and uh, demonstrate her in iClone. Uh, we'll just load up iClone in the background here while we are waiting. That can take a minute. And uh, for clothing, we'll go here to clothing. And I'm just gonna use a full body, uh, full character outfit for, uh, this female character here. Let's just use a professional outfit like a uh, corset or overall, maybe a cat suit will do. Yeah, let's do the cat suit. <laughs> or street fashion. Yeah, okay, maybe a dress is more appropriate than a cat suit. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do this polka dot dress here or whatever. And uh, to load your character into iClone, very simple, uh, very easy process. Uh, this needs to be conformed again, it looks like. Conform, there we go. Uh, do some quick adjustment to this. All right, there we go. All right, so um, what I did there, by the way, is increase the size of the dress and calculate collision just to make it a bit uh, less um, into the mesh of the character's body, all right? So we'll just use this for now and hopefully iClones load up in the back. We can close down Photoshop for now. Okay, so I'll quickly show you the ways you can export to iClone. The first way is to go over here to um, export to iClone, this little icon in your toolbar, send character to iClone. This is the one that I usually use um, just because it's easy and fast. Or you can actually go to file and export and export iAvatar. And um, you can also send character to iClone from here. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, make sure all this stuff is closed and load up the character in iClone. I'm going to show you just really the quick facial animation just to show you that these um, characters that are automatically generated in a uh, headshot with a headshot plugin are fully compatible with all of our iClone facial animation tools. Um, very easy, very quick and easy to do that. You can use automatic lip syncing. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with um, iClone's tools, maybe we should have given her some shoes. <laughs> but, uh, um, there you go. So we have this female character. You can quickly and easily apply some animation to her by going over to uh, um, the modify tab and we'll go to uh, to motion animation here rather and let's just create a quick script using a text-to-speech just to demonstrate the uh, lip syncing okay so we'll do something like uh, hey everyone welcome to our inaugural um, headshot webinar i'm your host 
auto generated girl. All right, and press OK. And that's going to just create an automatic lip sync for our female character in just a moment. Okay. Hey everyone, welcome to our inaugural headshot webinar. I'm your host, auto generated girl. Okay, so the you know the automatic lip sync there is actually not too bad. And you can click and drag to your timeline to go back. And let's just throw in a really quick um, facial animation there as well. So we'll go to Face Puppet. So Face Puppet is the tool that allows you to control your facial expressions using mouse movement. Oops. Hey everyone. Let's make sure we're at the very beginning. And we'll go a little bit closer in for this one here. And just use a preset again. If you have any questions about all this stuff, um, feel free to ask me. I'm just going to zoom through this facial stuff because it's uh, really simple. We'll give her a, a happy expression and you can press uh, preview and then space to preview. Okay, so that'll be pretty simple. And then once you're ready to go ahead, you can maybe increase the strength a little bit and just record. And I'm just gonna use my mouse movements, okay? Hey everyone, welcome to our inaugural headshot webinar. I'm your host, auto-generated girl. Okay, so we gave her a little bit of uh, head movement and facial expression, um, you know, not too much. But uh, you can also do something like give her a body animation. And again, uh, we'll just go to the content tab here. And uh, under motions at the top, we'll do like a, a really easy motion. Um, there is motions for, uh, let's see here, the um, pose and expressions, female. Let's just do a standing pose here. Oops. Um, no, actually, let's do a mocap city life. Uh, so chat. So these are these are content packs, as, uh, by the way, that I purchased from the content store. So you can find uh, if you want to find out where these content packs are, I can show you later on. But that's not really super important right now. So, all right. So generally, you know, your NPC character is going to have a distance like this. And let's say we can also make her look at the camera. Let's go to uh, um, modify here with our character selected, or rather attributes and have our character look at camera. Okay, so that means whenever we move around, she'll look at the camera. Okay, so this is kind of like the ideal distance for an auto-generated character. And so we'll play back. Hey everyone, welcome to our inaugural headshot webinar. I'm your host, auto-generated girl. Okay, so again, that whole process took like a few minutes and uh, we're good to go with a NPC character that you import into Unreal or Unity or uh, you know whatever film project you're, you're working on. Okay, so that's it, that's it for the first uh, scenario. The next one I'm gonna talk about is um, just a really quick uh, example of showing the skin settings, okay? So back in Character Creator, I'm gonna start a new project. We don't need to save this female character. And I'm gonna show you an example of how you can use this character to, um, you can reduce the character using the Insta LOD tool and have multiple copies in your in your scene, in your game scene or your film scene or whatever. Okay, so let's quickly generate another character using auto mode. Go to a headshot tab and into auto mode. And I'm just gonna double click here again. This time we're gonna choose a male character and this simple guy right here. All right, pretty simple stuff. Body type, we need to change this body type since we don't want him to have a female body. That would be a little bit strange. So we'll choose body type male. And for this guy, we're gonna choose clean rough, okay, for our skin type. And these are just, uh, preset skin templates, like I mentioned, and we'll generate that. So with this particular example, I'm gonna do a few things. Uh, like I mentioned, we're gonna talk about the skin settings, uh, mostly um, the texture adjustments and uh, just how you can modify and, and blend uh, the image with the auto-generated uh, skin textures uh, of Character Creator 3. We're also gonna talk about uh, the quick morphs that you can use, um, quickly morphing your character's face and uh, conforming to the actual image. Excuse me, and we'll also talk about, uh, again, very briefly, how to optimize your character um, using the Insta LOD tool and exporting him or her to iClone. Okay, and then I'll, I'll you know, make multiple copies of the character and we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate it in iClone once this finishes up here. All right, should be just a two shakes of a lamb's tail. We'll get it going. 
Um, I guess I can kind of uh, briefly uh, demo in iClone here. Oh, never mind. Finished. <laughs> OK. So uh, again, press the J hotkey to zoom in on the face. Always a useful uh, function. And this guy's eyes need to be changed right off the bat. So very simple. Again, this time we're going to choose the, the uh, green eye type. OK. And that'll replace it with a more green eye, I think, which uh, match, uh, matches his head a little bit more. Now, there's a couple things I want to talk about here in skin type. So skin type here, these are auto-generated uh, skin uh, masking types of uh, blend masks from uh, that come with uh, uh, head creator or head creator, <laughs> headshot in character creator. OK, so uh, when you use these, you want to take a look down here at the blend mask a little bit further down. OK, so let's take a look at this blend mask. It's fairly focused um, in one area. And that's because what we're doing is for everything, um, if we take a look at the photo diffuse, for example, here, um, everything that's on the scalp and outside of the main face area, that, that is going to be generated by a headshot. Okay. Um, so basically, everything that is white in this map is the original image that we used. Everything that's black is generated by headshot. Okay. And that's audit, that's like, you know, the clean, rough, whatever templates we were using before. OK, if we choose no mask, OK, what's going to happen is our blend mask is going to just be like, like this. And it's going to use as much of the original image as it possibly can. Now, I'm going to show you an example of no mask in the, in the next uh, scenario that we go through using pro mode. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to show you a couple of really quick and easy ones that you can uh, adjust. I don't want to spend too much time on this one. Uh, beard and scalp, for example. This is a very common one for, for male characters uh, to create a general uh, base. And notice that when I choose beard and scalp here, these skin settings are going to change. Our skin is going to be rough skin. Our scalp is going to use light stubble. And our beard is going to use light beard. OK? And our blend mask, again, will, will uh, return to the smaller blend mask. So this front area of the face is using the original image. Everything else will use these uh, skin settings. So if I want, once I've selected that uh, pre uh, preset, the uh, beard and scalp, what I can do is I can update skin texture. And what's going to happen is that's going to you know, automatically generate the, um, the scalp, like kind of stubble on the head and on the beard. And you can see it right there. So if we zoom in a little closer, you can see the scalp, the kind of stubble that's generated on the scalp and the light beard. All right, we can change this from a uh, you know, light beard to, uh, to a dark beard or a white beard. Um, I'm going to change to a dark beard just as a really brief example here. And once you do that, again, you need to update your skin texture. Um, now, for face mask on this one, we're not going to talk about face mask right now. Um, let's choose skin. Let's change from rough skin to like maybe old face. Okay. So we're going to make him look a little bit older um, with maybe a darker beard and a uh, light stubble. So once we've done that, let's go ahead and select update skin texture. Okay. So this is going to generate a light beard or rather a dark beard. And the um, skin is going to be a different normal map on the skin. Okay, so you can see there we created a you know much older looking face, and that's using this base normal map. So the base normal map is changed. Uh, it's much stronger uh, as you can see here, and there's you know freckles on the side of the face. So something like this is um, you know is fairly fairly quick and easy way to make your character look a lot older. And you can add in the uh, you know the the white hair and the white beard and stuff like that as well if you want. Um, but for this character, the his natural mustache is is dark, so it'll look a little bit weird with the white hair um, on it. Okay, uh, what I'm going to show you here as well is with skin color. Uh, we can also select the skin color swatch here, and I want to show you exactly which areas are masked. Um, before you do this, I recommend um, your current skin color. Just select Add to Custom Colors. Okay. Um, because you'll want to go back to the skin color later on and just press OK. Uh, actually, before you do that, let's change it to something like green, something weird like green, OK, and press OK. And when we do that, let's go ahead and update the skin texture. So this is going to show you uh, very vividly which areas of the skin are generated using Headshot, Headshot plugin. And as you can see, most of it is generated using the Headshot plugin, except for the front area of the face, OK? So everything that you see that's not green here is generated from the original image, which is this one right here. Okay, But everything that 
is green is generated using headshot. So you can see only a very little of it right now is generated using headshot. However, if I change to no mask and um, update the skin texture, what's going to happen is it's going to use more of the actual skin texture from the original image and less from the from the uh, um, from headshot. Okay, so you can see there the result. So hopefully that's pretty clear. Um, it's very important to understand the concept of, of masking when you're uh, adjusting your character's skin and face and all this stuff. Uh, very important to, to be clear on that. So what we can do is we can choose skin color and just go back to our custom color that we had before and press OK. Um, I do not recommend using like Control Z and stuff like that to undo what, you, what you've done because it'll create uh, you know, issues and, and all, all sorts of other fun stuff that may, that may not be desired. Um, okay, so with this guy, what we'll do is I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna go back to the uh, um, light stubble, actually let's go to the yeah, dark stubble maybe. And uh, I want his skin to be old as well since we're gonna dress this guy up really weird. We're, not gonna, we're gonna dress him up in like some post-apocalyptic stuff. And I don't think anyone in a, in a post-apocalyptic world has uh, beautiful uh, moisturized skin so we're going to give him an old face unless you stole like a truckload of oil of olay moisturizer or something you're probably going to have rough looking skin in a apocalyptic world so let's go ahead and just update the skin texture and uh what we're going to do is load this guy icon as well um, i'm just going to throw some clothes on him uh, before we move along uh let's go to uh shirts and this is a really cool pack called uh, Survivor Playset. I recommend checking this out in the content store. Um, all kinds of cool, like post-apocalyptic uh, shirts and stuff like that. Let's just, you know, throw a shirt on him, and you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, all sorts of other cool accessories too. So the the, de the details on this are pretty cool. I really like all, all the you know details on these characters, uh, on these uh, clothing items. I will go to pants and the same guy, a Boriart, a Boriart and uh, throw on some uh, uh, some cool jeans. You know, a lot, a lot of people these days are paying good money for these kind of jeans, hundreds of dollars for, for ripped and uh, patched up jeans. Uh, anyways, we'll, we'll throw on some boots here as well, and then we'll export them to, uh, to iClone. Uh, so we'll go up here to our boots, our shoes rather, and just throw on some, uh, some regular old boots. Or let's just use the, let's keep with the theme and use the Aboriart uh, shoes here boots there we go select these ones here now these ones tend to apply a little bit strange onto the feet if your character's feet are too large you may see the mesh poking through in that case what you normally do is just go to conform and calculate collision and that generally resolves the uh the collision issue on the feet okay cool so we got this dude uh we're ready to send him to iclone but before we do that um this time i'm going to export the character so we go up to file and uh export and to iAvatar. Okay, now the reason I'm choosing this is because I'm going to use Insta LOD Remesher. Now this, what, what this does is this allows you to really reduce the poly count of your characters. So you can choose the entire character. You can choose a maximum face count for the entire character. Now, um, the reason I'm showing you this is because when, you, when you're using auto-generated characters, a lot of the time you're gonna be using it for, like I mentioned, background characters or you know non-significant characters. Uh, and you don't want them to have a lot of resources. So this character right now is has is 46,000 polys. Okay, so it's not really a low count. Generally, you want to keep this to something you know below 20 uh, if possible. So what I would do here is I would change this to maximum face 20,000. Okay, and you can change mesh detail to like low or, or normal. Okay, you can even reduce it further if you want. Texture size, I don't recommend going anywhere above 1024. Okay, and then you would go ahead and export this character. Um, that takes a few minutes. So luckily what I've already, what I've done is I've already uh, generated that character, uh, the same dudes. So let's go ahead and find our uh, folder here, webinar headshot. And here you go, post-apocalyptic dude him into uh, to iClone beside our female character. Okay, so let's delete her. We don't need the host anymore. And you can see this guy, project triangle, um, selected triangle 20,000. Okay. So we've taken him down by half and, you know, from this distance, it doesn't look really look, he doesn't really look that much worse for wear. If we zoom in really close, 
you can see like at this distance, yeah, the face mesh is obviously, um, you know, been decimated quite a bit and we've uh, got lost a lot of detail there, but at something like this distance right here, if you don't need to have your character, um, you know, do anything important in the scene, it can be like this distance. And I'll, I'll show you like, um, let's do a couple of chats here. Uh, oops, take our character back to, uh, or back to frame one there. Okay, so there's one character in the screen, in the scene, just doing a little chat and uh, whatever. Okay, <laughs> just whatever animation we choose. Um, if I want, what I can do is press the W hotkey and that'll bring up our movement gizmo. And I'm just gonna hold control and click and drag on the gizmo to generate a few more characters. So um, say for example, you had a bunch of uh, soldiers in your scene, like you wanted to have, have like an epic Lord of the Rings battle or something like that. Um, you know, what you wanna do is ideally something like this. You wanna have your characters all, uh, you know, low, low resolution characters where you don't really need to see the details on them. Um, but you want to make it appear like there's, you know, hundreds of characters in your scene. I'll just generate a few more, maybe something like this. And then you can, uh, you know, um, have a result like this. Now, um, I want to uh, preface this by saying that my video card is only like a GTX, NVIDIA GTX 1070. So I don't really have the best, I'm using a laptop right now. I don't, I don't have like, you know, dual cards, like, like a lot of uh, um, professional uh, artists out there. I tend to use this laptop for most uh, most demos because this is, ends up being what a lot of users will, will use. Okay, you can see we're reaching already like you know 40 frames per second, which you know it, it maybe isn't uh, the best. Uh, we, we can reach like 50 frames a second, but we do have like how many characters do we have on this screen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have like 12 characters on the screen right now. Okay, um, and. What you can do is you can also reduce these even further. Like the guys in the back, like this dude back there, you could probably reduce him to like, you know, 10,000 poly or 5,000 poly even. And uh, that's um, the reason I wanted to show this again is because when you're using auto mode, this is one of the main scenarios that you'd want to be uh, using auto mode for. If you want your character close up, you don't want to do something like this. Um, uh, you want to have a pro generated head, which we'll talk about uh, right now. Okay, so we'll just start a new project, we'll use those resources. And uh, but before I do that, what I wanna show you is one final feature here. Um, we'll actually show this in the next, in the next uh, pro generated head. So let's go over here to headshot. And this time I'm going to generate a character using a um, pro mode, okay? So to generate the character with pro mode, just go over here to pro, um, okay. Actually, what we'll do is we'll start a new project first. It's always a good idea to start a new project. So your character starts from like neutral skin, neutral body and everything like that. Um, highly recommend just, just doing that. Um, we, there has been issues in the past where um, some things may not or may carry over when they're not supposed to. So to give yourself a fresh slate, a clean slate, just go over to pro mode, uh, start a new project and let's do a, a different uh, character this time. Um, so this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a uh, female character here with a uh, darker skin. We're going to choose the current body type and clean soft and generate this character. Now pro mode uh, is again like high, high texture, uh, high resolution texture, 4K texture. Um, you can reproject your photo. There's a tutorial on, on reprojection of the photo um, that we've done. Uh, We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, custom masks, again, you can customize the mask like I showed you earlier. Um, you don't have to use the templates. And there's also image matching, which I'm about to show uh, as soon as this is finished processing. Uh, photo reprojection is essentially just used for, if for example, um, headshot projects your image, the image onto your head mesh, like sort of incorrectly. Um, I think the, the example we show in the video is, that the mouth is a little bit lower than it's supposed to be or a little bit higher, I forget which. Um, but what you do is you adjust that with morphs. And if anyone wants me to you know, demonstrate um, you know, reprojection, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that uh, later on. Okay, now, um, so again, we use the clean and soft uh, mask. Now, let's take a look at this character if we don't use the mask. So if we have no mask on this character, and we update it. So now it looks okay, right? Uh, if we can use no mask and update the skin texture, what's gonna happen? It's going to use um, 
you know, a lot more from the actual photo. And I'll see that up here in just a moment. So you'll get something like this, where um, what it's done is it's taken this photo diffuse and it's using, you know, um, various parts that it shouldn't be like the white section here, for example, um, and uh, the black hair, which is fine and dandy, but uh, essentially in this case, I would just recommend going with the auto-generated clean soft uh, from a headshot. Uh, and you, again, you can edit this in Photoshop if you want, uh, but you know, honestly, uh, if you want to save time, like I do, I'm kind of a lazy, <laughs> lazy guy sometimes, I just use the auto-generated stuff. And it uh, creates a fairly decent result like this. I mean, to the naked eye, yeah, it's fine, okay? So what we're gonna do here, uh, I'm gonna just add some quick hair to her because like I mentioned, promo does not generate uh, automatic hair. So I'm gonna go to my content manager and we're gonna go over here to uh, the base and into our hair. And I believe in conforming hair volume one, we have this uh, hair that's a bit more suitable for this character. And we'll just throw that on there. Okay, so I think it looks fairly good. Um, if we go back to our headshot, our original image, again, um, this type of hair, would we don't have a template for this hair, unfortunately. It would probably need to be custom modeled and that would be kind of a fun, <laughs> fun project to model hair like that. But we're just gonna use this for now. And the uh, what I wanna show you right now is, I'm gonna show you the image matching, okay? So this is something that's only available with uh, the pro mode, okay? So activate image matching tools right here. Again, this is only available with pro mode. And the reason for that is because pro mode, like I mentioned, is a lot more focused on the details of the face. Now, when you activate image matching mode, it's going to superimpose an image, uh, your original image over top of your model's face at a, at a specific angle, okay? So it's almost like pressing the J hotkey, it'll automatically pop into that front facing, excuse me, front facing uh, direction. So once you've done that, just go ahead and uh, open up the image matching tools. And uh, you can see here, you can adjust the opacity of your image, okay? So zero opacity. It's still, you can still see it a little bit, but again, it's mostly showing your model, uh, your model's face, uh, the 3D model's face when opacity is at zero. If you change opacity to 100, it's completely um, covered by the actual image, right? So you can use this in combination and, and uh, uh, you know micro adjust different areas. Um, what I recommend doing, what I find to, to be, um, you know, an easier way to, to get this uh, taken care of, uh, to get the most accurate results, is to use the grayscale, okay? So grayscale will make the image black and white, so it's much easier, because that, that way your model is going to be, you know, colorful, but your image is going to be black and white. So you, it's kind of easier for me, at least, to be able to find out, you know, which areas I need to fill in and which areas I need to adjust. Um, I also uh, recommend increasing the contrast, okay? So you can see the difference the contrast makes. If we increase the contrast, it's much easier to see, okay? So I normally do around 30% opacity for e quick and easy fixes. And uh, you can see here, we're gonna make a quick adjustment with the ears, all right? Now, I don't wanna spend too much time on this next section here, but we're going to go into the activate sculpt morph mode okay now activate sculpt morph is available with both auto and pro versions okay so once you activate sculpt morph it'll pop up with these control areas over your character's face um, however i find personally that these kind of occlude the editing that i'm trying to do like i'm like i always feel like get out of the way you stupid you know like gray areas so if you want to get rid of those you can select uh, cont uh, show control areas remove them or show them like this i tend to get rid of it myself um, but again, even after you get rid of them, you can still mouse over and the certain areas will be selected. Okay, now there's things like the, uh, the, this one, the first one here is contour, all right? And again, there's tutorials that go into more detail on this um, and, and sculpting is a bit of a time, time intensive process. You can see here that maybe um, the cheek, I have symmetrical selected as well. So um, both sides are gonna modify at the same time. You can see maybe here the cheek uh, our model's cheek is a little bit larger than the image, so we can maybe just uh, take that in a little bit on that side, okay? You can see if I move it out, that pink area there, the pink area, you can probably barely see it, is the area of our actual model's face. However, the so we need to make sure we conform that to the shape of the, uh, the actual character, okay? But again, like I mentioned, the ears are kind of the easiest ones to see in this particular case. 
So what you can do is you can go over here to ears and uh, with ears selected, you can see if we mount mouse over the ears, there's different areas that we can kind of click and drag to fill in. To save time, I'm just gonna use symmetrical. Um, again, this stuff is fairly self-explanatory. You just click and drag and uh, take your ears to the you know position that you want. Um, I think that uh, covers that. But you can see that uh, the earlobe is quite a bit bigger in this character or in, in our model than it is in the, uh, in the image, okay? So what I wanna do here, let's uh, take off symmetrical and bring this one in a bit too. Oop. Again, you can spend a long time doing this stuff, but I wanna kind of give you a quick example. So for the earlobes, I'm gonna go over here to our Morph tab, okay? Now in Morphs tab, when you purchase the Headshot plugin, you'll have a whole bunch of morphs uh, under the Headshot folder here, okay? Um, if you don't have the Headshot plugin, you'll be, you'll be stuck with these ones here, which are still pretty good, the regular head ones, okay? For eyes, ears, you can adjust these and everything. But when you're adjusting your morphs in the Activate Sculpt Morph mode, you're going to be able to use all these Headshot morphs. And say, for example, I click on the earlobes. Once I click on the earlobe, take a look at the earlobe scale height over here. So once I click on it, it's automatically gonna jump to that, uh, that spider, that parameter that I can adjust. So you can see here, I'm adjusting that. And uh, it's for the left ear right here. So the L indicates left, the R indicates right. If I click on the right one, the right one will move, okay? Now you can see there's a limit to the ear height and it seems like, hey, uh, we don't have enough room there to, uh, you know, there's, it only goes up to 100, but in fact, we can take it up to like 150. Okay, and you can see at 150, it goes up even further. You can take it up to like 220 or something, probably should be good, like that, or even like 250. And we'll just work with that, all right? Um, so that's kind of essentially the uh, height that we want the earlobe to be. And we can do the same thing for the left earlobe. Okay? So left earlobe, let's just take that to like 250 as well. There you go. Uh, this will maybe need to be like 300 or something, I don't know. Anyway, just go from there. And uh, again, everything can be adjusted once you click it. You can see here, um, we can click the ears and just move them in and out. And there's all sorts of things like uh, that you can go into in detail under headshot, um, even under ear, like ear angle, ear, ear edge, okay? Um, like this, for example, you can see that uh, ear edge scale left. Okay, I can move it a bit more. So it looks almost like more elf-like. Okay, and the width, you can take that in like this. Um, anyways, that's just kind of what the, the basics of that. Uh, and again, you can spend hours and, and it's really easy to get lost in trying to you know adjust the small details. Um, but one other thing I wanted to do before I move on to the last part, part of this uh, webinar here is uh, take a look at the mouth as well. So for a character's mouth, um, this character has a mouth that has a little slight smile on it. Now, this is not an extreme problem. Um, this, this mouth would be fine in most cases. However, if we want to take the mouth, uh, make it a more neutral expression, um, I'm just going to choose symmetrical in this case, since her mouth is fairly symmetrical. We can click and drag those edges down, okay, like this. And uh, you can see it opens up the mouth uh, folder uh, under corner here. Um, we can take the uh, corner of the lips down like that. Uh, one thing you want to pay attention to is the lip seam, okay? So lip seam height is like, it's basically like the, the part between the lips, okay? Uh, there's one that's curved. You can choose to curve it or straighten it, okay? Um, very, very subtle difference. You can tell if we take the curve down to zero, it'll be more neutral, and that's ideal for what we want, okay? We want the mouth to be as straight as possible, like basically like a 90-degree angle, um, just a straight, straight line. Um, so you can change the lip curve, uh, lip seam, center height. You can bring up that up or bring that down, okay? Um, generally, you want to bring that to make it as straight as possible. And, uh, you know, there you go. Okay, and then there's, you know, all sorts of other parameters that you can adjust. Um, you can open or close the lips as well. I don't recommend uh, opening them at all. Um, a really, another useful uh, tip here is if I take my lips open to like this, for example, and I'm like, oh, Oh, crap, I forgot what the original value was. You can just double click on the lips close open text here. If I just double click on it, it'll take it back to the default value, okay? Which was in this case was zero. 
All right, so good enough. I think that's about all I wanted to show you um, in terms of that. Now, again, you can go in here if you want to, uh, to um, adjust your diffuse for your photo. Uh, let's say, for example, we wanted to um, select our photo and just launch it like this. Um, I also want to show you before we move on here, just a little um, image. This is from the uh, tutorial that uh, uh, Mike did on the uh, more advanced editing for, for facial textures and stuff. I uh, highly recommend checking it out. Um, so when you're in pro mode, um, reproject, keep in mind that when you reproject photo, uh, when you reproject the user reproject tool, um, it'll create a new brand new diffuse photo map, okay? So um, before you do any of this, you want to reproject before you do any of this stuff that I'm doing right now. If you need to reproject your image, make sure you do that before uh, before any of this. All right, just keep that in mind. Okay, so if you know I wanted to, um, let's say, add in some like custom makeup on this character, what I can do is I can just take this. Um, let's, for example, just use a, a light brush, and um, I'll just use the bracket key to bring it down a little bit, and I'll use the Alt key to just, uh, oops. Yeah, whoops, that was the function key. There we go. And we can just use a light, a light, uh, a light brush here on our underneath the eyes. I tend to see sometimes uh, we get some nice um, makeup with uh, light kind of colors under the eyes. It's just something a little bit brighter, actually. Something like this. Um, you know, just create some nice uh, eye makeup. I'm not sure if this is going to look good or not, but uh, again. Just something like this. And create some nice, you know, um, makeup around the eyes. We probably want to uh, uh, blend this a little bit more. Uh, let's see here. Something like this. I'm pretty bad at Photoshop, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, something like that. So what you would do is you would just go to file and you can save and it'll update that image um, onto your character in, uh, in character creator. Um, now, what I'll do is I'll go, I'll go ahead and save as in this case, just because I don't want to update that uh, with that crappy uh, makeup job I did there. Make sure you save it as a PNG, okay? And uh, go ahead and uh, photo diffuse. Oh, but it doesn't really matter the name in this case actually. We can just uh, replace this with, uh, yep, sure, why not? And uh, then we would go into um, Character Creator and close down Photoshop. And uh, go into Character Creator and just double click on that Photo Diffuse and replace it with uh, the one that we wanted. Um, yeah, actually, we should probably make sure we save this one first too. So save texture. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'll just call this diffuse. All right, we'll replace it and we'll look at, take a look at my really crappy uh, makeup job on the right side, on the right eye. Again, you need to update skin texture whenever you do this. And it'll create a nice, you know, if you look at it from far away, maybe it looks all right. <laughs> I'm not the best guy for making up in the world though but i've seen kind of you know make it designs like this in the past and I think it's pretty cool anyways well for now we'll load it we'll lo uh, restore our original uh, photo i can just double click there and uh, take it back to our original diffuse and update skin texture i just wanted to show you one way that you can uh, you know uh, customize that so um i think we're about done for this character let's take her quickly into iClone and i'll show you a quick uh, facial animation and then we'll get to our Q&A session here. All right, so uh, again, with our character selected, we'll just go ahead and take her into iClone. And so uh, get your questions prepared. We're about to enter into the Q&A zone. And uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, by the way, you can also take the skin color and darken it if you want. An easy way to do that is select skin color and uh, darken it. Um, I kind of feel maybe in this particular character's case, the skin color could be darkened a bit to more naturally uh, match the, uh, the image. You can see here, it's a bit darker. Um, maybe just update that skin texture there. 
and our character will uh, darken up a very slight bit. But we'll leave the lighter lighter one in the uh, in icon, I guess. All right. So there you go. I think I think that kind of skin tone matches the original a little bit better, in, in my opinion. Um, but again, maybe my eyes are a little bit thin somehow. Uh, okay. So facial animation, very easy. I'm just going to show you some really quick stuff here. We'll just do the same thing. Uh, we're going to put our character in some poses. Um, let's just choose a uh, stand pose, I guess, in this case. Um, maybe something like this. Nothing too scandalous looking. Maybe a standing stretch would be good. Okay, make her look like a, like a model or something. Um, I like this one actually. And um, we'll have her just kind of. Uh, if we go over here to the modify uh, tab, we can go over to uh, animation and to um, face puppet, or rather uh, we're going to use the edit motion layer tool. So use this to uh, just modify, um, I don't want to show the bones here. here. Uh, we can take her uh, arm here and just kind of move it if we want. Again, this is a very um, down and dirty example of, you know, just Ways you can modify your character. Let's take her head, use the E hotkey, and rotate it slightly towards us. And uh, if you want to do uh, face key editing, again, you can go to uh, uh, face key and use expression templates like this. You can use like happy. Uh, this one looks a little bit weird, but uh, there's also ones like fear. Um, you know, various ones you can use. I'm just going to give her a very just you know average happy expression, and then you can also go into your muscles tab here. You can select which muscles you want to move on the face by just left clicking. And if we want to raise our entire eyebrow, we can do so, or lower all the eyebrows. Um, we can use the erase tool to clear our selection. Um, we can have uh, take the lower eyelids up to make it seem like a little bit happier. Um, we can even like have our character wink. Okay, something like this. You look a little bit weird. Let's have her maybe look at the camera so it looks like she's uh, looking at us. All right, cool. Looks like uh, happy and uh, modular, like a model. I don't know if that's, that's definitely not a word. Um, anyways, there you go. So that's um, that's basically what you, ways you can animate the face really quickly and easily. Um, not really relevant to, uh, to headshot, but uh, relevant for when you want to you know, uh, animate your character or customize their facial expression or anything like that. Um, but I think we probably will have a lot of questions in this webinar. So I want to just jump right into the uh, Q&A section. Again, any, any, any questions you guys have for me, feel free to uh, throw those my way in the Q&A section of your GoToWebinar panel. Uh, we're not going to be going into the chat window. Um, so uh, just so you're aware of that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hello, hello, Alberto Ramirez. How's it going? I believe you wrote that before the webinar started. Um, okay, uh, let's see here. Alberto has another question here. I'd like to know how you make um, Mister's hair from the white hair of the Headshot app. Um, okay, yeah. So I, I think this is a pretty common request for a lot of people. Um, how do you make like give your character white hair? Um, let's just go ahead and make this character old looking, all right, as an example. So say for example, I got this female character and we wanted to create some sort of like, you know, Benjamin Button scenario where she was getting older. Um, so an easy way to make her look old, uh, we use a skin, I would use a skin type old female, okay? So what this is going to do is this is going to give us a uh, base normal map that's a lot more um, old looking and scalp I would use White hair, wavy is fine. Um, she, definitely, she doesn't have a beard. <laughs> okay, um, and then uh, in this case, probably face mask. Uh, no, we don't really need face mask in this case. Uh, this particular character, one thing I wanted to mention is um, her face is a little bit bright, and if you take a look at the original image, um, you know the the cheeks and the forehead. It's a little bit bright to compared to the uh, the rest of her face. Um, so what I would do in this case is I would try and use our, our uh, face mask. There's one called D-Light, okay? And you can see when we select that, 
take a look at the blend mask now. It's a little bit more faded out. So it's going to be, it's going to use less of the original image and a little bit more, or slightly, like maybe 30% more of the auto generated texture from a headshot. Okay, so that's probably what I would do in this case. And let's just go ahead and just try and update that skin texture and see what it looks like. And then again, we can change the, the hair color to, to white as well. Um, I'll just, I'll just take a look at how this hair looks like when it generates. So there you go. Um, there's hair in about 30 years. Um, fairly good results, I think. You know, fairly decent results for a couple of minutes. It creates a nice normal map and uh, much more uh, detailed hair. Now I'll just take a look, or much more detailed uh, uh, facial wrinkles uh, there. If I want to take off my hair mesh, all right. So here's what she would look like um, with the with the white hair. All right. Now for male characters, there's one like this that's like white hair and like balding, um, and that one's pretty good as well. Um, if you wanted to keep her black hair, uh, or rather her original hair, and change the color of that, you can go over here to your your mesh and um, diffuse. Uh, what I would probably do here is adjust the color of my diffuse map. Um, take our uh, saturation down, first of all, and uh, take the brightness up. Okay, something like this, and maybe increase the contrast. Okay, and just trying to find a, a balance of that that works for, for your, um, what you want your character to look, look like. Uh, saturation maybe a little bit more and take down their brightness slightly. Again, it's just a matter of finding the balance between all these uh, these hues and, and colors and stuff like that. But that's, that's the easiest way to, uh, you know, there you have an older looking female character and uh, the white hair underneath and uh, so on and so forth. So that's, a, you know, probably two minutes it takes to do that. You can make your character, age your character in, in a span of two minutes, which uh, is kind of scary. Um, all right, so that's hopefully that answers your question there, Alberto. And Mr. Lucas uh, Gilbertson, <laughs> when I modify eye blink on an eyelid, it hasn't been adjusted much. It breaks the eyelid. This can be challenging to adjust after the fact to fix. Is there any to reset the eye blink? Um, yeah, for basically for, for eye blinks, um, there's a couple of ways you can adjust that. Now, the easiest way is using the morphs that I, I kind of showed earlier for the eyes. Uh, I would go to morph over here and uh, where, let's see here, headshot has a bunch of eyes under the headshot plugin. So eye and uh, eyelid, you can adjust um, eye opening. Um, so things like this, you can use to, ad to adjust the eyelid. Uh, let's close our character's eyes and try and find a scenario where we, uh, and again, this, this character could probably use some of the, um, the uh, maximum Maximum upper eyelid fill. Uh, really quickly, just do that here. Um, yeah, like I was mentioning, generally the eyelid sliders um, can be used to adjust your character uh, after it's been updated. There we go. That'll be more like the original. And uh, <laughs> she even has wrinkles on her eyelids there, veins popping out of her eyelids. Uh, yeah, go down here to eyelid. Now there's, as you can see, only in the eyelid section alone, there's like, gosh, dozens and dozens of parameters that you can adjust. So, um, you know, to make things easier, what you could do is just go into um, the uh, uh, sculpt morph mode here uh, for eyes. And I would make them symmetrical, maybe um, just something like this. So say, for example, your eye was like this. This is a common like problem where you know, you bring the character in, it generates and the eyes are like this. Again, use the morph just to kind of adjust the, the position and you can adjust it to however you want. Um, I, I would be very surprised if there's a if there's not a parameter in, uh, in Headshot that allows you to fix that issue. Um, but if that's the case, then you might have to take it to an external uh, tool um, like ZBrush or something like that and, and morph it that way. Um, the eyelashes can be can be grown or, or change the position as well. Um, yeah, eyelashes are pretty fun to mess around with. Not really, but uh, they're they're super annoying actually sometimes. But you can adjust the scale, so you can see here this, the height is maybe a little bit of a problem. So we need to adjust that uh, position and stuff, and all sorts of you know 
fun things you can do. Again, there's dozens and dozens of parameters here to go through. Uh, yeah, but uh, we'll just, uh, I can't really recommend uh, one particular one for this for this case. This one would probably need to be angled uh, differently as well. Um, so there's an angle. You, if you want to search for something and you remember, you, you kind of remember what it, what, what it is, you can just type, type it in the search field like angle. Okay, so like eyelash, eyelash upper angle, you do something like that. And uh, this one here would be, uh, yeah, we need to do the, something like this one here. And then you'd probably want to just increase the height. So you just do something like height or not height. Uh, anyways, position maybe something like that, but uh, I haven't really messed around too much with the eyelashes because I kind of I find them kind of annoying. But uh, I don't want to spend too much time on, on eyelashes in this webinar since that'll be just super super duper boring. Um, but yeah, you do want to get those eyelashes in the correct position. Um, Mike Sherwood did a really great tutorial on the eyelashes. Um, just I think it was just just uh, we just published it a little while ago. I'll send this uh, to everyone's way here. Uh, headshot, eye clone, eyes. Let's try eyes. That should work. Yeah, I think it's th this is the one right here. So um, the eye editing um, by 3D. This tutorial. This one's a really good band. one that, uh, that uh, again, Mike did. Um, so I'll share this to you guys here. Because that process can be a little bit, a wee bit time consuming. There you go. Put it in the uh, chat window for you. Okay, let's move on to the uh, next one. Hope that answered the, that question. Uh, Vincent asks, I use GIMP for editing photos. How can I use this in Headshot? Um, same thing. Basically, uh, I just have Photoshop assigned as my default image editor. You can assign any image editor you want um, to, to Headshot, as long as it supports you know all, all the main formats, like uh, JPEG, PNG, all that stuff. Uh, GIMP is just fine. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Another question from Lucas here. Why no auto hair for pro mode? Um, yeah, so hopefully that kind of answered, I kind of answered that as we went along here. Um, in pro mode, uh, it's generally used, the automatically generated hair is not super detailed, uh, as you can probably tell in our character. So if we, let's put our, let's put our character side by side for a comparison here. Um, the post-apocalyptic dude that we, uh, Generated. Oh, actually, we didn't, we didn't generate hair for him. Uh, we have this female character um, that I generated from a previous uh, run through here. So we put this character side by side with the uh, other female character. Let's get Baldy out of here. Weak. There we go. Um, so let's just do a quick side by side comparison just to kind of show you the uh, amount of detail in the hair. I don't want her to overshadow it. Well, she's a little bit shorter. Okay, so you see, um, I don't want her to be following us anyways. That's also, that's kind of creepy when, when the faces are following you. Oh, not her, whoops. Oh, set free. Be free. Okay, so um, again, if you zoom in like really close like this, you can even see, especially on the specular highlight reflection areas, the the skin is a lot more detailed. Whereas this character is pretty flat. Um, there's you know distortions around the eyebrows, so they're not really uh, generated. Especially the eyebrow area. Take a look at the detail of these eyebrows. So quite nicely detailed. And then take a look at the details of these eyebrows. Um, and this hair is, um, you know, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and this hair is a lot more detailed. If you we can throw some different hair onto this character as well and you know just to see the difference but uh yeah quite a significant difference in the characters uh in the hair so that that's why um i mean you you can save your auto hair as well and you can put it on a different character like if you want to save your auto hair you can just select it and uh go into your content into your custom content and uh oops need to do that in a character creator rather uh rather you can do it here as well i believe Head. You can save it as a body part uh, hair and uh, just save it as a custom hair right here. 
oh, under body part hair rather, sorry. It'll automatically go to the right place. So bad hair, we'll call it. And then, oh, let's throw this bad hair on her. <laughs> yeah, so um, not, the, not the ideal result. Just control Z that. And uh, yeah, so I guess that kind of, hopefully that clears that up. Now, keep in mind as well that the auto-generated hair also is, it's not the lowest resolution. So what I would recommend doing um, when you auto-generate your hair um, using auto mode, you want to go to Insta LOD and go to Polygon Reduction Object with the hair selected, okay? So again, you can see here that the hair is, you know, quite detailed, a very high poly count, 17,000 polys just for this hair, okay? So if you were to you know, reduce that, I would highly recommend it. The auto-generated hair is not much better. It's still fairly high poly in, in some cases. So you, you definitely wanna try and reduce that. Uh, but, 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 let's go back to our Q&A. Okay, Benjamin asks, is there any way to use results from auto mode, topology and textures as a base basis for a pro mode second pass? Um, I mean, you could technically, but I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, yeah, because pro mode, I mean, I mean, again, it's used for totally different things than auto mode, uh, in, in my opinion. I mean, if you generated your head using uh, auto mode, uh, you could save the hair and apply it to your pro mode character, but I don't see why you'd want to generate a 1K texture and then use it for a second pass. I could see it going the other way but not for uh, auto to pro. Hope that answers that question for you there, uh, uh, Benjamin. Um, Isaiah asks, are there lights in CC3 in iClone? I couldn't, because I couldn't find them. Yeah, there's there's definitely lights in, uh, in CC3. You go to your uh, C manager here, you can find lights. Let there be lights. So you can uh, take all the lights off if you want. You can turn them back on. Uh, if you have light selected, you can go over here to your attributes and you can find all the uh, light values, increase the multiplier value, um, increase all sorts of stuff, change the color. Um, she's in the red light district. Um, yeah, anyways, you can have fun with that. Those are basically all the parameters there. Um, you can create, uh, you cannot create, uh, you can create lights as well in character creator. So. Uh, point lights, spotlights, directional lights, um, shadow casters you can create uh, uh, as well. Okay, hopefully that uh, answers your question there. If you want to find the light, for example, this side light, we can select it and press the F key and uh, there we go, make it visible. When you press the F key, that means it allows you to focus on something, by the way. And so this will be like way over here. Um, this is the back one so for the back lighting. It's your basic essential three point lighting setup. You can use the forward slash. Once you have your key light selected, you can use the forward slash key. Uh, where is it here? To, uh, to show it anyways. There you go. And then you can rotate it that way as well. All right. Uh, anyways, we'll just get out of this since it's not really a lighting webinar. But there's lots of stuff you can talk about with lights. Um, okay. Uh, so another question from Lucas asking about uh, if we have any plans to support 4K multi-material export to game base. Um, right now only 2K multi, 4K single material. Uh, generally what you want to do when you're exporting to a, to a game engine is you want to keep, you generally want to try and use a single material. Now this depends on sometimes, you know, um, certain materials in the game uh, you want to you know, add a splash of mud to your character's uh, genes as they, as they run through the mud in the game. In that case, you can't use single material uh, or wouldn't recommend using single material. Um, but generally for to save resources, single materials are always going to save resources as a rule um, and lower resolution textures are going to save resources as well. It's just it's just a matter of how much resources your your, your game, your game world is consuming. Um, you definitely want to try and reduce that as much as possible. And that's my, uh, that's my answer for that one. <laughs> uh, it would be madness to do, to, to use like super high resolution textures, unless you have a, 
workhorse of a PC that's able to support that. But uh, mine tends to, uh, to to lag fairly simple. Um, okay, so C mentions here her skin does not match her face. I'm, I'm not sure which character um, we were talking about there, but uh, uh, you have to be more specific on something that you want to fix. Uh, so I'm not really sure. So maybe you can specify um, C about that uh, issue that you found there. Um, okay, next question we'll go from, uh, we'll uh, answer here is from Raid. Um, would be great to see a character going to Unreal Engine with all the hair, cloth, and textures, please. Um, yeah, that's easy to do. Uh, again, the best way to do that, I don't want to get into Unreal too much right now, but the best way to, uh, to export your character, um, you can just take this female character into Unreal, I guess. Yeah, she's fine. She has an old face. People will give her a bit more of a weird clothing, more suitable clothing for an older lady. Uh, let's go to definitely don't want to give her a corset. Uh, let's try something like, uh, I don't want we'll to do something like this. I think maybe a nice long velvet dress will do. And again, uh, for the body, you have to have separate normal maps. Again, so you can see here that uh, the issue is her face is fairly wrinkled, but her neck and uh, chest, they seem to be okay. So you'd have to use a separate normal map for the for the neck and you have to uh, adjust that using other, other software. Um, but to uh, export this character, uh, file export and FBX, we'll just export her to FBX. We won't give her shoes, but we're gonna use a target tool preset of uh, Unreal. Um, we can just export the mesh, doesn't really matter. We only need the mesh in this case. Um, Insta LOD again for reducing the uh, poly count. I want to delete hidden faces on this one. Just export. I don't want to get into too much detail, but I'll just show you how easily it can be done. Uh, I'll just call it the sample. Sample. Okay, sure. Okay, and while we're waiting for that to export, um, we'll load up to uh, Unreal Engine, I guess, here. And we'll, we'll get that loaded in. But I'm gonna go into answering other questions first as we're, as we're moving along there. Okay, so Tim asks, can, any be can anything be done about the faded, washed out look of the eyebrows and facial hair when generating a head from a photo? Um, so yeah, Tim, to answer that question, the, the best uh, choice you have is to use the pro mode. Okay, so pro mode is going to be a 4K texture, so it's going to be a lot, uh, a lot stronger. Um, another way to to do uh, to um, make the eyebrows less washed out would be to uh, let's just launch 4.2 here. Um, you can use a fo photo editing in Photoshop as well, like launch the uh, the image, the facial image in Photoshop. So if you wanted to, you know strengthen this character's eyebrows. Uh, they're, they're already fairly good, you know, for this particular character. Um, the only way to strengthen them would be to uh, stick it into Photoshop and um, throw in some more, let's take this off here, throw in some more, um, you know, darker detailed eyebrows, some nice strands of, of darkness would be, would be okay there. Um, but that's, that's basically all I can say for washed out eyebrows. In pro mode, you shouldn't really have washed out eyebrows, okay? It, it should be able to generate them quite nicely. Um, yeah, if you go to the skin here, there's, you know, makeup you can add as well. There's essential, essential skin, um, high resolution skin you can add, throw on your character. I recommend using these uh, high res resolution RTL skins. These ones are fairly good. So you can replace these. And these are from a, a content pack uh, you can purchase from the content store as well. Let's take this image down here. Uh, yeah, but it's, in terms of that, that's all I can really say. The, the washed out eyebrows are going to be generally from low resolution uh, face textures. Okay. So Lucas mentions here, after adding clothes, the body mesh beneath gets hidden. When removing clothes, the body mesh remains hidden. Uh, what do I select to bring the body mesh back to the visible areas? That used to be hidden by the clothes. <laughs> so this is kind of like, um, yeah. So this character, I believe we um, used a hide mesh. 
for this character. If we go to edit mesh here, um, let's make sure we have the character selected instead. Oops. Um, edit mesh for the character. I'm just going to make the uh, clothing invisible here. Make the velvet dress invisible. Okay, so this uh, type of, uh, you know, you, all this stuff is hidden because I've, I've automatically hidden the mesh. So if I wanted to restore any of this, I can just go uh, edit mesh here and select the mesh that I want to uh, restore basically. Um, so, uh, whoops. Uh, make sure the character is selected, not the dress. And there we go. And we just, you know, select all the stuff we want to show and pop. There we go. Whoops. It should be able to show here. Oh, I think we need to go to the, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see. Um, edit mesh for this. Yeah, I haven't done this in a long time. Gosh. Uh, okay, we have the velvet dress selected. And render states. Let me get back to you on this one. I know there's a do, 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 do. modify um, cloth layer settings, I believe it's in. Um, or hide body mesh tool. That should be the one. Okay, yeah, this one we can uh, hide body mesh tool. This is uh, with the newer version of uh, character care. So you can choose to show this, show that, show that, and show that. And uh, yeah, basically that's how you can restore uh, different parts of the body or, or show it or hide it. Um, so yeah, hopefully that, uh, that answers that question. And there you go. Oh crap, you just kind of hit everything. Well. Uh, it's basically the opposite way, <laughs> using the hide body mesh tool. Um, yeah, we need to make sure we have the body mesh selected. Um, cloth selected, rather. Whoops, I'm not sure what we clicked there. But we are able to restore and hide um, different parts of the uh, the character show all there you go show all is the way you do it <laughs> all right um we'll go to the next one here uh okay so ahmed asks can headshot adjust face geometry uh not using the image face as texture and tweak the skin through parameters of the skin like we do in cc i'm not really clear on this here um using the image face as a texture and treat the skin through parameters of skin like we do in CC. Oh, I, I think Ahmed, what you're talking about might be the, uh, the substance parameters. Um, so unfortunately, current characters don't use uh, substance material. Um, so we don't have that, we don't support that for CC3 characters. Um, yeah, so be aware of that. Uh, if you want to adjust any parameters, you, I mean, you, you can easily convert your character uh, to a substance material character, but you'd have to, you know, use a, a substance uh, template. And uh, the way you do that is um, by loading in, you know, the CC one. Whenever you see this little um, little flame, little flame icon in the bottom right there, that means it's a substance enabled uh, texture. So you can use the substance parameters with that. Um, Okay, so that's the way you can tweak the substance parameters, skin parameters in Character Creator 3. Uh, otherwise, we encourage you to use like, you know, photo editing software um, to, to do that. Okay. Uh, Paul here asks, can we bring in hair from the auto mode? Yeah, you can uh, save the hair in the auto mode like I showed earlier and apply it to any characters, uh, no problem. Uh, okay, so Ahmed asks a, a good question. How can we remove lighting info from the face texture? Um, I'll show you a quick example here in Photoshop that uh, is fairly fairly simple. I'll just go into, uh, and this goes into some of the uh, more detailed photo editing stuff, but I'll show you this because it's pretty quick, a uh, pr quick example to show. Um, I'm just gonna find the correct face image here. Oh, let's choose something like, uh, a character that has shadow on one side of her face, maybe like this character here. Um, so let's open this with Photoshop. 
So I'll, I'll show you why this type of character is not ideal um, and how you can easily, quickly and easily fix it. Um, this is also covered in, in one of Mike's tutorials as well. I think it's the advanced uh, photo editing one, which is this one here. Yeah, advanced image editing right here. It's important. And I'll share this in the chat window as well. So what, what, I'm, what I'm doing is quickly, it's essentially a quick and dirty version of what he shows in this, uh, in this tutorial here. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Where am I? Where's my Photoshop? Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Adobe's new requirement to sign in for every every stupid thing. All right, whatever. Let's see. I should do the check. And you can see I was just in Photoshop and then I have to re-sign in, which is lots of fun. It's a great, great feature. All right, so this female character here, uh, what we'll do is we'll, uh, um, this one side of her face is um, shadowed, okay? The right side is shadowed and the, or sorry, the right side of her face is like, in, is bright, it's like ideal, but the left side is kind of shadowed. So if we were to launch this image into a uh, headshot, one side would probably be a little darker, and that's just because it's using, you know, the the source the source image. So what I would do in this case is I'd probably try and like, you know, get half of her face here. Um, we'll just work with that. I think that should be fine. And uh, you know, Control C, Control Shift V. We'll paste that as a different layer. Um, and what I'll take this do is take this layer here and just uh, Control C, Control Shift V. Control Shift V, by the way, copies it your layer in place. Again, maybe it's not entirely symmetrical, but what we can do is we can just um, uh, uh, go to transform and flip. There we go. And we'll take this side and we'll just move it over here. So we got two face right there. Now, don't worry about if she's only has like, you know, three teeth in the middle. It's not going to be a problem when you, uh, because we're going to replace the teeth anyways. And then maybe just merge these layers here, right click and uh, merge layer. And then you'd probably want to do something like, um, you know, so now both both sides of the head or face are, you know, um, uh, lighted evenly. Okay. They're lit evenly. Uh, and then you'd want to do something like, you know, maybe fix the nose here slightly. Uh, uh, I don't know. This might work. Let's smudge it a little bit, um, and then uh, you, know, you can also use like auto stamp tool or healing brush again. So healing spot healing might be good for this one here, in the middle. She so doesn't look like she has kind of a two foreheads there. Anyways, just try and get it as much as uh, as even as you can. Something like this would be okay. And you can also use something like the clone stamp tool as well. Um, so here we maybe, uh, I don't know where we'd use the clone stamp tool on this one. Maybe something like up this area here. So we can also use clone stamp tool. You can use alt and uh, alt here rather to find a source. And just make sure that that shine is kind of consistent, and you know, I don't know, it's gonna look really bad. But uh, probably I should have uh, just fixed the uh, the healing brush in the first place. There, it's gonna look really stupid. Anyways, uh, I'm not the I'm not the best at Photoshop, as you can see here. You're probably like, what the heck is this guy doing? But uh, there's your there's your uh, ideal image there. Uh, it's lit uh, correctly on both sides. And probably want to try and blend that shine in a bit more, and whatever. Anyways, as you can see, I'm not a graphic designer, uh, but that's one way to quickly and easily, uh, if you have an image that's uh, dark on one side, a uh, quick and easy and dirty way to um, to make both sides identical. And uh, in this case, you probably want to close the lips as well, but I won't show you how to do that because let's move on to something else. <laughs> um, I could probably show that later if we have time, but uh, yeah. Hope that answers your question there, Ahmed. If you have one, a character with, uh, you know, one side of the face is uh, kind of unequal to the other, um, just copy and paste the other side of the face. If only we were all symmetrical in real life. Um, 
Okay, so Dennis has a question here. Next to the morph sliders, there is a favorite heart and an edit icon. What does the edit feature do? It is always inactive when I try to use it. Um, so I think you're talking about character creator. We'll go to our morph sliders here. Um, this will be in, uh, whoops. Let's just uh, move this over a little bit. Uh, you, I think generally you might have to have like pipeline node to do editing. Um, so the settings here, um, this one here maybe, yeah, edit. Uh, I've never edited a uh, slider. I believe this is only available when you have your own custom sliders. So um, lock, yeah, it's like fate, you can put in your favorites. Um, edit. I'm not even sure actually, I've never used edit to be honest with you. Um, maybe the help files would, would help us out because I've, I've literally never used that feature in my life. Mm, uh, maybe get back to me on that one. Um, I, I don't want to go browsing through the help files there, Dennis, but uh, yeah, maybe get back to me on that one because I'll have to figure it out myself. I've never used that uh, edit icon. I believe it's from when you're creating, customizing your own morphs, but I haven't done any of that stuff in, in gosh, over a year. So um, yeah, get back to me on that one. You can email me, by the way, uh, kai at reillusion.com. That's K-A-I at reillusion.com. And uh, I'll try and get back to you on that one there, Dennis. If anyone else knows, maybe you can uh, throw it in the, in the, in the Q&A window there. Um, okay, so let's go into um, Simon's question. Has the plugin been tested with non-human photographs, uh, i.e. for creature design? Um, no, we haven't done uh, like non-human photographs yet. Uh, there would be, need to be some sort of sp a special preset for that. Um, yeah, I, I, I've never tried that myself. I don't, I don't know that anyone in the office has. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we'll have to be waiting a bit longer for that. Unfortunately, there's Simon. Okay, so an anonymous attendee asks here, um, what else is reprojection used for in addition to using it to modify the headshot to the original photo as you showed us? Uh, well, that's, I mean, headshot or reprojection is essentially just used um, if there's a mistake in the in the initial projection of your image onto your mesh. So say, for example, your image is projected onto your mesh and the, mouth, the part of the mouth, we talked about the mouth part, the lips part before. If the lips part is at a different height than your actual, uh, your actual mesh, you want to adjust the mesh to conform to where it is on the on the image, so where the image has projected it. So, say for example, the the image, the mouth is is higher than your mesh. So, what you want to do is you want to raise your lip part of the mesh to match with that image, and then you want to reproject. And that's really um, essentially the only thing it's used for. Um, to, to be honest, I don't, I don't I don't know of any other uh, uses for that. Um, let's go to the next question here from Marcel. Um, will there eventually be a hair option in pro mode or is it possible to use the hair from auto mode on a pro mode mesh as a second step? Uh, yeah, I, I think I kind of went through that at the uh, end of the, uh, the webinar there or the live demo where I um, threw, you know, this chick's hair onto the... Uh, Her friends here, um, uh, but you can use it as an auto-generated mesh. I mean, that's like uh, that's a huge thing. If it creates an auto-generated mesh, that is a uh, um, a huge time saver. You can start with that auto-generated mesh. You can export that as an object, as an OBJ, and you can modify it further. You can retexture it uh, in external programs, and then you can import it back in. Uh, but it just creates the advantage is it creates a a hair mesh, a basic hair mesh that is conformed to your character's head. So you don't have to do any conforming of it to your character's head. It's already done. All I would recommend doing is maybe some um, some texturing. Uh, definitely want to improve the, hair, the texture resolution in most cases. And you may want to, you know, again, add a bit more uh, detail in, into the mesh itself. 
Um, Alan asks, can you use more stylized photos for a headshot like a caricature? Um, yeah, you can technically. Uh, it's again, the only difference with stylized photos is you're going to be using different texturing. So, um, and again, I would probably try to use the, the only concern I would have would be the eyes. I mean, if you have a character with like super huge eyes or something like that, most of the, most of the facial morphing modifications could be done in head in headshot using character creator three. Um, if those aren't enough, then of course you can export your character to a 3d modeling program, like, like ZBrush or 3d coat. And you can just, um, really exaggerate the features of your character there. Um, but I've never actually tried to use a stylized character. Uh, again, I've, I've done stylized characters in crazy talk eight and cartoon animator four, and they worked out fine. So I assume there's, there's probably an easy way to do it or not, maybe not such an easy way, but uh, you should be able to do it anyways. Um, but I'd have to get my own experience with that to, to give you a solid answer there. Um, Okay, so Marcel also asks, is there an option for a, a profile mode side photo? Uh, Might have missed it. So for side profile, what you want to do is there's not currently an option for that. We, we possibly will include this in the future um, with, with the headshot plugin. But for now, what you need to do is you need to import your image as, uh, as a prop or as, a, as, a, as an image layer. And we do cover this in one of the tutorials. Um, let's try and find a side facing. I'm not sure if I have a side facing image here. Uh, side, there we go. Okay. So, see, for example, we'll just say this was the side of her face. So, what you do is you would uh, click and drag this into your, uh, your scene, or rather, right click and drag it into your scene. Oops, like this. So right click and drag, very important. And you can import it as a plane or an image layer. I find that um, image layer uh, kind of does the trick. Okay. The only difference with image layer is you cannot adjust the position of it. So no matter where you go in your scene, it's always going to be the same position. So think think of an image layer. Whoops, think of an image layer as essentially attached to the camera, right? Uh, you want to hold shift and click and drag to uh, to scale uniformly. By the way, and then again, you take your uh, here image layer uh, material. Take our opacity down like this. Okay. So yeah, essentially you'd be in this case, you'd probably want to use a plane. Okay. But you'd probably, you know, just, uh, align the heads and you have to resize and everything, um, based on this. So, okay. So you'd make your modifications, uh, based on that and using, using all the same, um, all the same, uh, techniques, all the same parameters, all the same tools as well. Uh, let's just go ahead and delete that. If you, if you import it in as a, uh, right click and drag import it in as a plane, then the plane can easily be manipulated, uh, moved around in the, in your scene. So you can see it imports as a plane there. Uh, keep in mind that plane is subject to lighting in the scene. So if your lighting is not good, um, it's going to be a little bit strange. So uh, again, you can rotate it using the E hotkey and uh, something like this. You don't want it to be in front of your character, obviously. Oops, you know, <laughs> it imported in quite a, quite a ways back there. So you can press the R hotkey to scale it. Um, R, E, and W to scale it and reposition it. And then you do something like this. Blah. And I'd probably just press F and focus on it. Again, you have to make sure it's a 90 degree angle. So go over here and, and uh, your rotation should be at zero on the Z axis there. So all your rotations should all be at zero if you want uh, an exactly 90 degree. And then do something like this, move forward. Okay, and then <laughs> it looks kind of cool. Looks like he has a really big shoulder there. Uh, and then of course you would go to your materials and just, uh, adjust the opacity of that as well. Okay. Uh, so unfortunately that's the workaround right now. We, um, we don't have the side facing characters directly. 
um, or the side facing uh, superimposed images um, available right at this time, right? But that's probably a feature that we're going to be including in a feature we're going to be including in the future. All right. Okay. So uh, next question is from Douglas here. How can we adjust hair when the picks the picks the pick has bangs in the front? Um, so if you have a character with your again, this is photo editing and Photoshop kind of stuff. Um, and I highly recommend checking out that tutorial that, uh, that Mike did. Um, he showed how to uh, superimpose or how to kind of trans transplant a forehead from one character to the next. So in Fringe here, if we have, you know, let's try something a bit easier. I don't know. Like this, uh, whoops, let's load our in Photoshop. Um, you know, female character like this. What you could do is you could take another image, like um, maybe this one has fairly similar skin tone. Uh, and uh, do a forehead transplant, All right? Sounds pretty, uh, sounds pretty fun, just like this. Zoop. And you just like, blend it into the other forehead. <laughs> Something stupid like this. Again, apologies for my atrocious uh, skills at, uh, Photoshop, but uh, control C that and, you know, paste it into here, <laughs> resize it. Bam, there you go. Now she doesn't have a fringe anymore. We need to, you know, just increase the size of this, you know, something like that and uh, use a healing brush. I don't know what you would use. But uh, you, you, you get the picture there. And you need to do something like this. And I don't know. You get the point. Obviously, you probably want to spend a bit more time than this, but that's uh, essentially the process. That's one way to do it, anyways. You can also just copy and paste from maybe her chest or something, which might be easier. And I probably should have done that in this case because she does have a little bit of skin down here. But yeah. Anyways, um, that's the way to do it. Um, and again, I don't have time to go into because I don't. I don't think anyone wants to see me struggle with uh, with Photoshop for the next half an hour. Um, okay, another anonymous attendee here asks: um, uh, Can you start an auto mode import the finished auto character into Pro mode for high resolution and other changes? Well, so here's the problem with that. Um, and I'll answer this again. Once you generate your head in auto mode, it's automatically go, it's automatically set to a 1K texture. Okay, so really there's no point to, to um, try to convert it into pro mode anyways, because you can't create a 4K texture from a 1K texture. Um, it can go the other way around. So you can, um, you know, take your character with a 4K texture and, you know, decrease the uh, resolution of the texture in, into a low resolution character, but uh, it doesn't go that way, unfortunately. Okay, a question from uh, Penelope. I gather that if we use an image of a 3D character from Composer, et cetera, et cetera, the process will be the same. Uh, yep, the process will be the same. Um, I'm just thinking if there's a, I mean, if, if you have a 3D character in Composer, there might be a better way, a more accurate way to do it where you can actually just bring your character in. Now this requires having the pipeline version of uh, Character Creator 3D which I highly recommend getting anyways. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's, there's so many features there that are super essential to anyone who's doing any of this stuff. Um, uh, you can bring your poser or your Daz characters directly into Character Creator 3, and it'll can automatically convert all the materials and uh, the rigs and everything like that, auto skins and everything like that um, in a single click. So uh, Penelope, I'd recommend checking that out. That's probably the ideal process um, as opposed to trying to trying to generate a, a head using headshot. Um, hopefully that answers that question there. Uh, a question from Ra Raid uh, Raid again. Can you de-age a character? Yeah, we can definitely de-age a character like the uh, the old lady we have on the uh, screen right now. We want to make her young again? Let's do so by quickly again going over to the. It's a pity I kind of like this uh, old, she looks like an old wise lady. Uh, going to headshot and um, 
skin tight, clean, soft. And Shazam, she will be back to her regular young self in no time, just with gray hair. Well, let's go to the next question while I'm waiting for that. There you go. All right, so um, did you talk about, Greg asks, did you talk about using a photo of yourself in this program? Um, no, I, I've, I've done, I've done it with a photo of myself and I've had, you know, pretty good results. Um, I actually used my passport photo, scanned my, uh, my passport photo and used it for this. Um, but yeah, it's just the same as any other photo. So just make sure you have super high resolution. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's all I can really say. Uh, if you want the best results. Um, so Lenny asks, why are you using traditional instead of PBR? Um, I think maybe you were talking about the, uh, the eyes. Um, I did want to mention something about the eyes here as well, though, uh, with your character's eyes. Um, if you go to the materials for the eyes, let's just make sure where they're selected first. Um, it may confuse people, some people that we have a uh, digital human eye and a PBR eye. Um, now digital human eye is going to be the eye that's, that's used. If this exists, um, this is using our digital human eye shader type. Okay. You can see it down here. Uh, you can change that to PBR traditional if you want, but I recommend keeping digital human eye because that opens a whole bunch of different parameters down here under shader settings that you can adjust for your eye. So if you want to change your, your eye color or, you know, uh, any, anything like that, you can go into here under, under textures, under eyes, under, uh, iris and, uh, you know, you can even adjust the inner color of your iris as well. So let's take a look at this character's, uh, iris, for example. Um, there's the inner color. Uh, we can change this to like, uh, let's change it to like white or something very noticeable. And if we increase the inner scale, oops, I think we have the wrong eye selected here. Uh, where is it? Do we have the right thing selected? We have her right eye selected. So the iris color, let's just, oh, the iris color is too, but we need to replace the eye first. Goodness gracious, meatballs of fire. All right, let's change to the, to the brown eyes here. And then we can change the iris color to something like a uh, darker color. Let's just choose a uh, dark brown here. For the right eye, or maybe we can change the right eye to something blue, something cool. Um, give her like uh, the heterochromia kind of eye type. Um, okay, so this needs to be uh, adjusted in combination with this one here. So once you set the base, um, it's not going to have as much of an adjustment, and you need to go to the actual image here as well. So ba -ba -ba, let's just do this first. So we'll change this eye. You will launch into Photoshop. Let's use your quick select to zoop. select this part. Oh, crap. We selected too much. There we go. And let's go to uh, adjustments. Something like that. And maybe our hue. Yoop, yoop, yoop. Okay, we'll just stick with that green and we'll save that. And there you go, Shazam, the base color has changed. And now we can go in here and modify stuff like um, the Irish inner color, we'll change it to red, so that should, that should show up. There you go, okay. <laughs> so there's the inner, uh, inner iris color that's red. You can change the scale, so the amount of red. You can have blood take over her eyes or something like that, like blood lust or something. Um, and you can change the uh, IV or UV radius for the iris as well. All sorts of fun, funky stuff you can do, right? Here you can see the iris color changing a bit more noticeably. All right, and there she has one hazel eye and one brown eye. All right, enough with the eye adjustments. I think I went on a side there. Uh, okay, so Douglas here asks, the pro mode has bangs still on the forehead. I can use it, but if pro is there, how can I adjust? Um, again, again, highly recommend uh, checking out those tutorials that I recommended, um, our, uh, our playlist for the headshot. Um, 
you can find them all in the headshot if you go to over here to uh headshot you know um our product page for headshot you can go over to learn and tutorials okay so all of our headshot tutorials are in here and the one that does is good for um pro mode adjusting the pro mode with the hair i believe um i believe that uh, mike did one of those pro mode and this one here pro mode texturing uh, uh um and morph slider approaches this one right here Right, so I recommend checking out all these. If you're really serious about headshot, check out all these all these tutorials. Um, they're very useful, and each one covers you know slightly different topics. So uh, if you go through all these tutorials, you'll be like the pro of uh, headshot in no time. Okay, so question from Isaiah. I've looked at all the lights folders in iClone, and I don't see digital human light presets. That's in CC3. Um, so digital human lights presets. Um, I'm not sure if you're talking about lights or, or shaders. So maybe you can um, clarify that for me, uh, Isaiah, since you're mentioning here lights. Um, I, think, I think maybe you're talking about shaders, but uh, hopefully you can kind of clarify that one for me there. Uh, okay, so Lucas asks uh, from the modified drop down if you use correct eye blink on the eye right now, it'll correct the eyelid. Oh, yeah, maybe um, that might be a little bug if you use a correct eye blink on the eye. Um, the eyelid might break. Yeah, generally, I don't re recommend using that correct eye blink. It's, it's, like, it's like an automatic correction, and sometimes it won't be as accurate. Um, since we do have much more detailed um, eye modifications, uh, I, like eyelid modifications, I recommend you know, using the ones that I showed earlier. Um, yeah, that's something that kind of takes a little bit of troubleshooting for sure. Um, okay, hopefully, Jules, the web links are accessible to you uh, now. Um, Alberto asks, do you recommend... Uh, the Vroid Studio. I'm not. I'm not sure what that is. Um, so maybe Alberto, you can clarify uh, what that is. I think maybe you have a typo there for T T Vroid Studio. Um, so hopefully you can get to that later. Um, so Benjamin mentions here the reason I asked is that the shapes seem to come out better in Auto. Um, you know, I've done like probably hundreds of these uh, headshot generation head generations. And I can say for, for sure that auto is not really any better than pro, um, but it really does depend on the characters. There's, there's so many um, elements and parameters at play that you know, some characters will, will come up, possibly come out better in auto and some characters possibly come out better in pro. And I've seen it go both ways. There's really no rule um, to that. It really depends on the character. And I find it's, it's fairly, uh, random in a lot of cases. So I can't really give you any, any solid tips on, you know, which one to use better, uh, which one is better for, for head shapes and stuff. Cause I've had all sorts of different, uh, um, you know, outcomes and that's the, uh, that's the fun of artificial intelligence. It'll just kind of, sometimes it's intelligent and sometimes it's not so intelligent. <laughs> um, okay. Vincent asks here, another GIMP question. When I go to save the texture after using GIMP and I have I just save the texture, it doesn't automatically save the texture like it does in Photoshop. Um, that may be the case uh, in, in, in certain um, situations. Generally, what it does is it will save the texture just fine. Um, it'll update it automatically in Character Creator. If it doesn't, just save it into another folder and load it in later on, like, like I did earlier. Um, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes it does miss that. Um, it just seems to be from time to time. Um, okay, let's try and get to a few more questions here. Uh, Simon asks, do you have any tools for removing lighting from the face photos you use in headshot, like polarization, et cetera? Um, removing lighting? Uh, so I showed you earlier the, um, the example of using that uh, D light, um, I, like face mask. 
Okay, so for example, this character here, if we use a D light, let's use D light strong, just to give it a stronger example. Um, so you see this, you know, fairly light sections here on her cheeks and her and her forehead. If we used a D light strong uh, face mask and update our skin texture, what we're going to see is a much much more uh, flat type of look on her on her face, particularly on the uh, upper cheeks, the nose. Um, they just like that. Okay. So, I mean, to each their own, um, this character still has, you know, fairly decent, uh, results for the skin texture. If you close, you go close up like this, you can see, um, you know, the skin texture is, is fairly nice. And again, this is, this stuff is all a combination of, of lighting and, and everything. So if you, uh, you know, increase the lighting, you can get those bright spots back just by increasing the lighting. So. Uh, generally, what you want to do is you want to start from something as neutral as possible. And I just say this for everything, you know, start with a neutral expression, uh, a neutral skin type. So it's not so, um, you know, not so bright. And if we take that light down, you can see the specular highlights a little bit better. And I think that looks a, a nice, uh, nice look right there. You can see those, you can see the skin detail a lot, uh, a lot more clearly in this particular character. And this, this skin, of course, is, um, this is not even, this is just a, a soft skin. If you use something like a, like an old face, for example, let's take her, let's age her once again. You'll be able to see a lot more detail um, with this particular lighting scenario. Um, so hopefully that answers your question there, Simon. Uh, using that, um, that face mask, I think it's uh, fairly good. Um, yes, yeah, so Russell says someone, Said about experimenting with a headshot on a Daz character. Um, I think maybe you're talking about taking a headshot head onto a Daz character. In that case, I mean, you can save heads and you can apply them to, uh, to different characters. Uh, so what you might want to do is import your Daz character in and just apply a headshot uh, image to it. You can do it that way. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, I'm not really sure on the, the pipeline you're using there. So maybe you can kind of clarify if, if, uh, if possible. Um, oh, follow-up question here. Can you save the head to be used as a morph on a DAS 3D character? Uh, the, the heads aren't saved as morphs. They're saved as uh, eye heads. I believe they're still saved as eye heads. Um, yeah, body part, uh, eyes, gloves, hair, lower. Yeah, head right here. So you can save the head. Let's see what happens if we save this character's head. And we can apply it to the other character. I believe it should um, change the skin color and everything like that as well. Yeah, there you go. So it'll, it'll, it'll change the, um, the head will be trans translated or transported uh, and the rest of the body skin color will be uh, the same thing as well. But uh, keep in mind that again, it's using those same lower 1K resolutions. Okay, so, so you can save as a custom head and apply it uh, that way to your dad's character. Okay. Okay, so thanks, thanks, Greg. I was kind of struggling there with the with hide mesh in <laughs> earlier, and there's some people were helping me out in the QA uh, QA panel there. Thanks a lot for that, guys. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit of a dullard sometimes when it comes to that stuff. Uh, click a few times and you'll you'll discover all sorts of things. Um, okay, quick quick question from Dar Darja: Can you advise a step by step procedure and how I can move my avatar with cloth and texture? into iClone to create an animated fashion so presentation of the exact measurements of avatar and cloth. I exported via OBJ or FBX. Is this possible and need step-by-step -step procedure? Can I create exact facial character of the model I take a photo of? Uh, well, the last part, yes, you can create a, a exact facial uh, match to the character that you have a photo of. Uh, in terms of the pipeline for importing your clothing onto, onto characters, uh, we have a tutorial series that goes into that. Um, let me just quickly provide a, a link for any, anyone else who may be interested. 
um, this is in our character creator three tutorials. Again, I highly recommend everyone go to our product pages, go to learn and just go to the learn tutorials. All our tutorials here are, are updated. Um, and uh, there is stuff here, like I think, I believe could be under cloth. Yeah, so stuff like this cloth, this cloth section here, um, that'll, that'll help. There is also, I think under masterclass, yeah, so this is um, generating clothing and assets for dynamic clothing systems. All these tutorials, um, yeah, these are done by Pablo. Um, fairly good, uh, um, ZBrush artist. I highly recommend checking those out as well. Um, GoZ, this is one that uh, um, a lot of, some of these are done by, by Chuck. Uh, I, I highly recommend these ones, uh, ZBrush character creation. That's not really related to clothing though. Um, Sketchfab has some clothing ones as well. Um, so yeah, I'll throw this into the chat window for you guys there. And uh, you can browse that all on your own time. Okay, so um, Philip asks, which camera um, objective uh, do you recommend? I think maybe you're talking about lens focal length. Um, it really depends uh, <laughs> uh, on your on your scenario. There's there's other tutorials that go into much more detail on that um, for for cameras. So in iClone, for example, if I uh, you can just choose create a camera. This is what uh, he's talking about here. Oops. And we go to our uh, modified tab for a camera. We change our focal length here, so you can change something for like to eighty millimeters. So this is for you know basically for stuff like 200 million like the higher the the focal length the better it is for you know close up of, of two characters talking if you're having like a 20 millimeter you can see the uh the difference of, of the camera length right there this is useful for you know long distance shots or when you want to make a room appear larger than it actually is uh i highly recommend using the lower focal length like 20 uh, 35 but when you're having a close-up conversation with two characters, ooh, there we go. <laughs> we want to use a 200 focal length, okay? Um, I should probably get these two characters in a better position or just delete them all together. It's no fun looking at uh, auto-generated characters super up close like that. Um, okay, let's go to the next one here. Um, Darja again asks, can I clone my avatar into uh, iClone platform with exact measurements? Yeah, you can, all, you can change your, your characters. Um, basically, you can change anything on your character. Uh, in terms of exact measurements, like waist, uh, chest, all that stuff, um, that needs to be just manually done in the character creator. Uh, okay. Um, this is... Uh, to the next question here from Benjamin. Okay, so yeah, so Benjamin here mentions uh, when you want to make one side of the face even to the other, you can also mask the one side and adjust the balance as well. Yeah, that's, a, that's another way to do it. Um, the advantage of having, uh, we're, we're talk, I was, I'm talking here about the uh, uh, adjustment I did when the, female's character, the female character's face was dark on one side. Um, the advantage the way I did it is everything is super, super, um, uh, it's exactly the same on both sides, uh, including the uh, symmetry and the, and the dark and light balance. But again, you, you can definitely, yeah, like mask out stuff. It just takes a bit longer for my, you know, longer for my taste. As, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm a lazy, lazy, lazy Photoshop dude. Um, Okay, so Greg asks here, I'm wondering about the potential to create a character based on yourself. Yeah, super easy, Greg. Just take a, like a passport photo and uh, like I did, like I mentioned earlier and uh, throw that in there. Shouldn't take too long. Um, the only limitation that I find is hair. Okay, so that's why, you know, auto hair, we have auto hair, auto hair that you can refine and modify. But um, yeah, uh, if, if you have a hairstyle that's you know close to one of the ones content packs we offer, just throw, throw that in. Uh, so Philip asks, why is auto limited to 1K? I think I kind of mentioned that um, because it's 1K is lower uh, resource, it takes up less resources. 
So uh, you want to use that for characters that are not really close to the screen, maybe like mid-range to, to long distance away from the screen. Uh, let's go to the next question here. Yeah, so um, Benjamin answered the question earlier from Dennis about the uh, the edit feature uh, on the morph sliders. Um, yeah, so it is for when you make your own morphs. So thank you for clarifying that, Benjamin. I, I remember there was something about custom morphs, but uh, I, again, I haven't created my own morphs in ages. So, um, so to clarify that for everyone, um, the edit function there in uh, on the morph slider is when you create your own morphs, like when you're importing Daz characters and recreating the sliders from before. Um, and I won't go through that right now because I'm kind of little sketchy on the details of how to do that. But uh, yeah, it's only a tutorial away. Yeah, so there you go. It only applies to the morphs you've created and not the stock market marketplace uh, morphs. All right, so that's the morphs that you imported in yourself. So you can uh, modify them further. Uh, Michael asks, can I use black and white images? Uh, sure, um, you're gonna get a black and white character if you use black and white images, but that's fine. Um, no limitations on that. We're not going to say no black and white images. Um, oh, <laughs> so Benjamin, you kind of clarified about your earlier question here earlier, using auto mode first uh, so that you can skip the step of having to Photoshop out the hair. Yeah, unfortunately, if there's hair on your forehead, it's going to translate directly onto your, your model's hair or your model's face, the mesh rather. Um, so the only way to do that is before you do anything, take that out in Photoshop. Um, Subdiacon asks about uh, Agisoft Delighter, able to kill shadows. Um, possibly, I've never used that myself. Um, AGI Soft Delighter. Um, Maybe put the, put a link for that in the chat window if, if people want to learn more about that. I'm not familiar with that, unfortunately. Okay, so Raid asks, um, de-aging a character from an actual photo of an old person. So yeah, I mean, the only way to de-age uh, anyone in a photo is using Photoshop or your image editing software. Unfortunately, we don't have the tools for that in a character creator but again that's what photoshop is for that's what they've photoshop has spent the last you know 20 30 years by now probably on uh allowing people to photoshop themselves you know um make themselves look younger you just gotta check out instagram for that kind of stuff um yeah so unfortunately nothing um in character creator 3 to, to take care of that but uh Face filter, we have another program called face filter. That's pretty good at de-aging people. <laughs> um, if, in case any of you are interested, that was a pretty, whoops, not Facebook, face filter. Um, this program here, face filter, it's pretty old, but uh, you know, it does the trick. It's a really simple and easy program to use. I used to use this uh, often when modifying the uh, the uh, initial textures of our character. So you can use this if you want to, you know, really beautify your character before you beautify your image uh, really quick and easily before you import it into Headshot. Yeah, it's pretty good, uh, honestly. Um, fairly quick and easy program that uh, does a lot of stuff that uh, what you need to do. So won a lot of awards back in the day. Um, okay, but still uh, fairly useful as well. Um, so Philip asks, are you going to add more blend masks or can we add more blend masks by default? So uh, with, with the pro version, you can customize your own blend mask. So let's see what we have loaded up here. I have this uh, you know, old female character. So let's create a uh, streak of youngness on her face. Um, so if I take this blend mask, for example, and I decide to launch this in Photoshop just for funsies. And I wanted to... Um, take the her forehead. Let's make her forehead really young. Um, so what I would do is I would just kind of put paint white all over her head like this. 
Okay. Now, uh, also what you want to do before you do this as well is um, take your uh, photo to diffuse and you want to launch this as well. And uh, let's just close all the other stuff. This is getting complicated. Uh, we don't want to save that piece of art, the beautiful piece of art that I just did. Um, so what you want to do is take your, uh, your uh, photo right here. Let's just click and drag it into a, there you go. And just reduce the size. Zoop. Um, just like this. Okay, so you essentially want to make sure that uh, both uh, images are the same size. And just take your opacity for this one down. And um, yeah, just create a layer from the background. Okay. And put this layer above this image. And then you can also take the opacity of this one down. Because what you want to do is you want to draw on your uh, on your opacity layer. So this is the ideal setup. So you want to have your blend mask on top of your diffuse layer so you can see which areas you're drawing on. Okay. So what I want to do here is I'm going to make her entire forehead. Um, that was a pretty good guess. Uh, her entire forehead ageless, right? So I'll just do this. I'll create this blend mask up here, just make it all white. Again, so what this is doing is this is using the original image in this area, okay? So then I'll just um, take this off and just delete this. And we can uh, take our opacity for this all the way up and file and save. And in character creator, update. So if all works well, we should get rid of get rid of the uh, wrinkles on her forehead by doing this. You can see our blend mask changed. Okay, there you go. Uh, not bad. Again, we still need, need to change the normal probably if we like just trash the normal or you know launched it. Um, if we trash the whole normal, it'll take everything off though. So uh, you probably need to go into your uh, um, normal mask here and launch that and, and just, you know, smooth out the, uh, the head features here as well. So as you can see, we probably want to do something like this, just, uh, this clone stamp tool could come in handy. Ba -ba -ba. Get rid of those forehead wrinkles, make her young again. And I'm pretty crappy at uh, Photoshop in case you haven't uh, caught on to that. And there we go. Bow. Save. And we'll update. Let's see if that works. We'll smooth out her forehead even more. So that should get rid of it. And I'll move on to the next question. There you go. Success, kind of. All right. So that's how you can de-age your character, I guess, um, in a way. Uh, or that's uh, modifying the, doing customized blend mask stuff. Um, OK, so Peter asks, on my i4, i5 i core machine, when I run headshot auto mode, I get an error saying, my processor needs to be able to use the AVX instruction set. I have not run into this before, uh, Peter. So what I would recommend for this, uh, it's more of a technical uh, issue. I'm not really familiar with all the, the technical specifications of you know the requirements for, um, for processors and stuff like that. Uh, I would recommend getting in touch with customer, uh, customer support um, and giving them a shout and seeing if they're able to do some QA uh, testing for you there. Uh, unfortunately, I've never come across that myself though. Okay, a uh, question from uh, Douglas. I have iClone headshot, a CC headshot, and will eventually add everything, but I noticed I couldn't find a lot of content that profiles child sub subjects. Oh, child subjects, okay. I work with a lot of kids in educational setting, and they're really wowed at seeing themselves as a 3D character. Um, Daz has some options for this. Um, we, we do have a couple of options if you wanna make your character uh, like a, a childlike character. Um, 
again, let's probably just um, throw like maybe some, uh, let's throw a little polka dot dress on here or something like this. It's gonna be like the weirdest. Um, I'm gonna replace the character's face with a, some skin here, some real time skin. Let's do something like this here. Yes. Um, I know there is a, a um, DAZ pack that we, uh, originally a DAZ pack that we sell on the uh, content store uh, for Dawn. And uh, there is a, uh, I think she was an actor baby. Yeah, high wire, uh, high wire, sorry, baby Luna. So this is one that we can change our character to like a baby, baby character like this. Um, you know, one simple slider, you can really change your character into some uh, small baby like this. And you'd want to probably uh, adjust the facial morphs a little bit more as well. But uh, you, know, you can go from a baby to like a slightly uh, thicker body. You can thin the face down or, or thin the, uh, yeah, something like this a little bit. Um, and thin body okay because you know obviously you wouldn't want uh um much of a chest on a, on a baby character but uh yeah probably what i would do is just uh reset all this to like a neutral um body so you could put a body and uh your uh, female character you don't want to reduce this to uh to zero oh, it's, oh this is because of the uh, the dress actually so i think we need to reapply the dress here Yeah, I think um, I won't spend too much time on that, but there's like other more so you can go into and, and uh, have fun with that. But uh, now we have this weird looking like almost looks like a character from Alice in Wonderland on the screen right now or something. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different morphs you can uh, use to um, adjust to more childlike proportions. And that's that's a whole other topic. We basically have a, a webinar I did probably a couple of years back where I talked about how to, how to create a child character. And uh, that's, that's quite a while back though, but you can email me as well. And I, I can help you out with that, Douglas. Um, Kai at religion.com again there. And I can provide you with the, uh, the links for the correct sliders that you might need. Okay, let's go to uh, next one from Jesse. I wonder if you would suggest using auto mode to create the hair for the character and then using pro mode to create the head in more detail and using the auto created hair. Um, yeah, definitely. That's, that's definitely um, a pipeline you can, you can work with. Again, the advantage of that is that you generate your own hair. But again, the hair that I showed you, again, it looks quite low resolution. So what I would recommend doing is modifying the resolution and uh, maybe even modeling it slightly to, uh, to make it look a little bit better. Um, definitely, I would recommend doing that. Uh, Darren asks, how many 4K textures are available for characters and are they hard to create? Um, 4K textures, the best one that I can recommend, let's just start a new project here, is the RTL ones I just showed you. So, um, oh gosh, those are in the content store, I guess. If we go to shop in the content store, you can find those, gotta hear you. And I uh, believe, in, it's still on here. There's a headshot morph 1000. Not yet. All right, so character creator. Um, this one here, I think, has some of them. RTL. Yeah, so there's fully rigged rig digital actors. These are these, this is a good pack, this three scan series. This one has super, super high resolution textures. Um, the elite characters, this is the one here that uh, I'd highly recommend getting as well. Um, a lot of stuff on here has, um, you know, very high resolution textures. This one has the highest. Um, the Elite Characters one uh, has the RTL um, materials that I showed you earlier, the 4K skin. It is loading something. Yeah, so see all the skin. So my internet's lagging a little bit here. 
yeah, there's some very, very detailed skin on these, on these uh, skin types for these characters. Um, again, you can see different types of ethnicities. A uh, very good pack to pick up. If, you're, if you want highly detailed character skin types, I um, highly recommend checking out this uh, Elite Characters Pack. I'll put this in the chat window as well. There you go. All right. So let's get to the next question here. Uh, Renell asks, is there a preset skin for, for the character? For example, I want to change the skin uh, in an instant from pre-made skin texture. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what I showed you earlier. Um, again, I'll repeat the process really quick here. Going over here to your uh, uh, skin tab. Um, again, this is the pack that I just showed you. CC3 RTL high resolution. And we can, you know, give our character a darker skin type since it's a female character. We'll choose a female, uh, you know, skin type. Uh, you want to apply all these shader settings and parameters, of course. Oof, duh. And uh, you can see just a very, a very slight difference, but uh, the makeup and the uh, skin on the eyes is very, very different as well. And you can use these in combination with the uh, morphs. So if you go to uh, to base, and you go to like head morph right here. Again, there's uh, various uh, morphs that you can use for different types of characters. Okay, you can use different female morphs to uh, to adjust the uh, female face. Maybe something like a. This one would be interesting. I was just going to morph, uh, change the, the head morph slightly. All right, there you go. It's an interesting looking uh, character. Okay, hopefully that answers your question there. Um, GZ asks, uh, is it better to get the frontal and side photograph of a subject used for the head creation? Can we load both front and side views in the plugin? No, uh, so I, again, I just talk, I talked about that a bit earlier. Um, unfortunately, we can't, we don't have the ability to in, in head, head, headshot yet to load in the side, the side reference image, but uh, that should be coming in the near future. Um, but yeah, um, obviously, if, if you're going for, if you're striving for the most accuracy, uh, try and do as best as you can with both. Okay, so Tim kind of elaborated here. Vroid Studio is a free hair creation program that was recommended by uh, Rampa on the forums. Um, and yes, it works for bringing hair into CC3 as an OBJ. Oh, cool. Okay. Vroid Studio. I'll have to look that up. But I have never used this program before. All right. Cool. Okay, so let's go on to the next one here. Jeezy uh, asks, what's the easiest way to create the best hair from the photograph that doesn't look like a low resolution hat when creating an auto mode? Well, unfortunately it's gonna look like uh, auto mode is gonna generate you know, low resolution stuff. Um, it's not gonna be the best resolution. That's why I mentioned earlier, we need to increase the resolution and uh, add more detail to the, to the mesh if you want to use, use it for close up. Okay, so Darren asks, will these techniques work, work on a monster-like character? Um, yeah, if you want to turn yourself into a monster, <laughs> you can uh, have fun with that for sure. You may need to have uh, like green, change the skin to green color, something like that, add a few more like bumpy, wart like normal masks. And uh, well, yeah, it's definitely doable. All right, I'm going to move on to the next question here. So we're in the home stretch. Um, Topaz has Topaz Clean 3 for de-aging filter cheap and handy. Okay, so that's another uh, program, Topaz. Uh, Russell, maybe you can throw that in the chat window if you want other people to, uh, to know about it. Uh, Marcel says, is there any ability to actually see the mesh wireframes as a layer to reference uh, when working with the diffuse or mask layer in Photoshop? Um, okay, so throw the UV map on. Uh, so what, what I showed you earlier, um, Marcel, was just using the diffuse map, seeing that into Photoshop. Um, again, you can uh, do the same thing um, with the UV map, I believe. should be able to uh, export the UV map as well. Um, so the third character, I'll just kind of 
we're not using headshot on this character anymore. Um, but uh, should have the ability to launch a UV map. Yeah, down here. So this option here, you can see where it's most over UV. You can use that to launch the UV map. Um, I'll generate a quick uh, head here. Let's generate this dude. He looks pretty evil. Um, let's give him a beard and scalp. Um, yeah, but that's, the, that's how you launch the UV map. And I'll show you how you can bring it to Photoshop really quickly once this uh, character is uh, generated. Okay, next question from Jeezy. Is there a way to create a normal map in Photoshop? Yeah, um, in Photoshop, I believe, the way to create a normal map is you go to like a uh, filter and 3D and you can just generate a normal map from here. Um, now, it's, uh, the accuracy of this um, really depends on your particular situation. Um, obviously, this is not an ideal image to create a, a normal map from. Oops. Let's go back into Photoshop. Come on. Oh, we still have Unreal up here. I forgot to <laughs> import the character into Unreal. Uh, goodness gracious. Okay, so there's a normal map generated from Photoshop. Cool. All right, again, not going to be the uh, the best because there's not going to be much in terms of wrinkles and stuff. Let's see a little bit of uh, skin texture on there. Very little on the forehead and that. That's the easiest way to generate a normal map in Photoshop. Um, ba -ba -ba. This guy's still going, eh? Um, yeah, the Unreal project here, I'll just load up a quick project, why not? It's from our last webinar we did on LiveLink. It's like a three hour car ride here, this, uh, this webinar is going on. <laughs> All right, so um, this guy should be done pretty quick. Probably running too many things in the background here. Let's close down icon. Maybe close down Photoshop for now as well. There you go. So if you want to launch that uh, UV map, and this guy's pretty good results. Um, we'd probably want to narrow his eyes a little bit and uh, adjust his goatee slightly, but uh, fairly good results. Um, to launch the UV, oh, again, stupid. Uh, has to be pro mode, okay? It has to be pro mode before you're able to use this stuff, the custom masking. So don't do it using auto mode, do it using pro mode. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, I did use pro mode. Why isn't it? Uh, oh, there we go. I have to select it first. Um, yeah, UV launch right there, photo diffuse, launch UV, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, that should answer your question there. Um, let's see the UV wireframe. Hopefully, that answered that. Yeah, Benjamin mentions here there's some Toka Motion characters as well on the content store that do some pretty good. Uh, oh, fantastic! Thanks, Adobe. Um, yeah, Toka Motion characters on the content store that allow you to uh, make your characters look more childlike. Yeah, um, Benjamin here mentions that 4K textures take longer to load, for sure. Um, so yeah, you wanna make sure that you're conserving your resources as much as possible. Um, so there's your UV map for that dude. And you'd superimpose that over top of the uh, the blend and everything, just like I did earlier. Um, key. Ronell asks, can we expect hair for pro in headshot? Uh, not at this time, but hopefully we'll get more detailed hair produced in auto mode in the future. Um, okay. Uh, Gigapixel AI for, uh, for scaling. Uh, Benjamin mentions here, for upscaling your, your image. Um, uh, keen to see a headshot character imported into Unity 3D. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely we'll definitely have tutorials on uh, importing headshot stuff into into Unity and Unreal in the near future here. Um, uh, and last question from Jeff here: uh, What do you do with a headshot with someone with glasses? Um, 
unfortunately you have to you, know, you have to photoshop those glasses out or uh you know or else you know it's going to show up with the glasses because again it's just using the uh image just using the face texture to generate that headshot um character so here's our three object so here's our fbx from earlier i'll just bring this into our uh, whatever folder it doesn't really matter um high quality shader sure this is going to be our uh old female character with uh and then uh your import settings um mesh yes no no animation we don't need that um this, this stuff should be fine there's there's tutorials on how to do this um and i can show you those tutorials as we're waiting for it to import here uh those should all be in character creator um whoops yeah i believe they're um all the data and poser pipeline stuff is here as well by the way yeah, so there's Unreal right here. Just follow all this Unreal stuff um, for importing your character creator to be characters into Unreal. Um, follow all these tutorials um, done by yours truly. And uh, you should be uh, a pro in no time. I guess it shouldn't take that long. Yeah, this is basically the process. Unless you have Live Link, um, and a Live Link is a little bit of an expensive piece of software but uh, highly recommended uh, to use Live Link if you are going to be consistently using Unreal in your pipeline. It's really useful and it just, it essentially just saves uh, and converts all the textures automatically um, for your character there. Okay, so one more question here uh, from Daniel. Any plans on creating a full body mocap AI based on a video created from an iPhone? Wow, that's a that's a mouthful to even uh, to even talk about. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I can't really answer that, Daniel. That's a that's a develop uh, process. Um, that's a developer question for our development team. I probably can't answer much for you. Um, here's our sample character in Unreal. Was am there you go. And the head is still uh, compiling, I believe, or the hair is still compiling. But uh, yeah, there's your uh, old wise lady in uh, Unreal. And I believe the hair is still compiling or something like that, but uh, still compiling all the shaders. But that's how easy, that's how easy it is to get those uh, Unreal characters into iClone or into uh, <laughs> creator characters into Unreal. Um, all right, so thanks, Darren, for uh, joining the class today and joining the webinar. Hopefully, you guys all learned a lot uh, here. Jason has one more, GZ has one more question here. Uh, when importing characters into Unity 3D, the mouth remains open. Is this a CC3 issue? Uh, it should not be a normal CC3 issue um, for that. So I'm not sure that, again, would take a lot of uh, troubleshooting. Uh, and Simon mentions you should consider an indie version of Live Link with up to 1K textures. Um, that's a possibility for sure. Um, there may be some changes coming to, to Live Link in the near future, but uh, keep an eye out for that, particularly if you're an indie studio. Get in touch with us regarding uh, Live Link if you're interested in it. Um, Philip asks. Um, Okay, so this is the tutorial. So unfortunately, I can't I can't copy and paste stuff from the Q and A panel that there, Philip. But uh, if you want to, uh, uh, you can send that uh, to the chat to the chat window for people who want to uh, learn more about the the pipeline. Um, yeah. So I think uh, <laughs> thanks so much, everyone. This is like kind of a marathon uh, webinar. Uh, we're going to be like I think two and a half hours now or something, but. Uh, yeah, so thanks so much for attending. I think we're going to just uh, end it off there since we're kind of out of questions in the QA panel there. Um, we'll have to wait even longer for this, uh, her hair to compile, unfortunately. But uh, I did show you the, uh, the import pipeline either way. And uh, there's our old uh, lady. Reminds me of that uh, lady from The Matrix, uh, whatever her name was. Uh, I forget. Anyways, <laughs> my brain's kind of dead right now. So let's uh, let's sign off before I start forgetting things, forgetting my name and stuff. Um, thanks everyone so much for attending as always today. Um, and any feedback, always feel free to put that in the in the survey we're going to send out. And you can always contact myself as well, Kai at Relusion.com for any other uh, questions or concerns or you know help that you may need. 
And uh, yeah, I'm going to sign off there. So make sure as well, always check out our forums for, uh, you know, we have a great community on our forums that are able to help with uh, questions, any questions you might have. Uh, some people have a lot of time to just go there and, and thankfully uh, help others in the community with uh, with their questions. And as always, we do those, we put, put effort into making those tutorials for you guys to, to you know, go into more detail um, uh, beyond the help I'm able to offer in a webinar. Okay, so yeah, let's, uh, let's sign off there, guys. Um, good evening, good morning. Oh, the Oracle was the Matrix Chicks name from <laughs> Simon, thank you. Uh, and uh, we will... Uh, See you hopefully in the next webinar, probably in the new year. All right. Thanks, guys.